Well, we know one thing. These fans aren't rusty after the layoff. They are charged up and ready to go. Hold on to your hair today. It is windy here in Philadelphia. The Minnesota Vikings won the toss they received. So Jim Johnson's defense against the great Dante Culpepper coming off his best year and really one of the best in the history of the NFL. Number one seeds, 8-0 all time against number six seeds. That's the situation here with Philly against Minnesota. Enjoy the day. Ontario Smith from the five. They fake the reverse. And Smith, with room to run, gets it out to the 34, but a penalty flag comes in. And it's a hold against Minnesota. During the return, holding, 97, 10-yard penalty, first down. So they get Johnson on the hold, and that will move the football all the way back inside the 15 to the 12. The offense and the offensive line, Matt Burke is going back to the Pro Bowl. The skill positions, Wiggins has had a great year. Moss starts, and they say he looked good in practice on Friday. Culpepper with pressure, dumps it off, and immediately brought down by Javon Curse is Michael Bennett. So Curse makes the first defensive play, no gain. And we look at the defense. Curse, part of this very good Philadelphia defense that has pro bowlers across the line in the secondary. Up front, Curse had a very good year, is not going to the Pro Bowl. And Trotter, even though for the most part he took over in week nine, is the starter for the Pro Bowl at the middle linebacker spot. Second down and ten. And off Bennett. Good pressure up front by the Philadelphia defense, and Bennett ends up gaining four. Michael Lewis on the tackle, third down for Minnesota, and they were the best team in the NFL this year on third down. Well, and Jeremiah Trotter is coming out flying on two straight snaps now. We've seen him diving through the line of scrimmage and getting in the backfield. When you watch this defense on tape, they play on the other side of the ball. They create big plays on defense, and Minnesota is going to have to offset that with big plays. Third down and six. Culpepper in trouble. Buys time, will try to run for it. He won't make it. Culpepper knocked out at the 20. It's time for a Vikings punt. Michael Lewis, the safety up to make the spot again, and a penalty flag is down on the field. Right now, they're spotting the ball just shy of the 20, a couple of yards short of first down yardage. The indication is that it's against Minnesota. And if it is, the Eagles will decline it, and the punt will come from Bennett. You saw for Morelli, this is his first playoff game as a referee. He's actually working with Bill Vinovich's crew. But he's a first-year referee, and they are not eligible to work in the postseason. There is no foul on the play. Okay. You know, when you talk about Jim Johnson's defenses, his big thing is on third down. That's when he likes to bring pressure, and Dante Culpepper certainly sees that. He comes up, makes a check, trying to block up the blitz. They don't, however, get the blitzer off the left side of the offensive formation and that's why Dante had to get out there and try to scramble. They slid the line off to the right and Michael Bennett is going to have to come to the left and pick up that last guy if they're going to use that protection. That was Derek Burgess who came in to flush Culpepper out of the pocket. High snap. Bennett gets off a beautiful punt. And taking it in and being knocked down immediately is Dexter Wynn. A return of minus two yards, and on the stop, it was Russian Jones who came down the field and made the quick hit and stopped. You know, so much of what the Eagles wanted to try to do when they come into this game, because they know they're facing a very explosive offense in the Minnesota Vikings, a team that led the National Football League converting on third down. 
over 50% for the season. Jim Johnson wanted to try to get them into third and long situations, bring the blitz pressure package, something they did not show a lot of in their first meeting back in week two. The Eagles will start with three wide receivers for their first play, which starts at their own 32. Play action. McNabb with all day. Fires and the pass incomplete. Lewis, the intended receiver. And Antoine Winfield, who was brought in from Buffalo along with Brian Russell there for the stop. And what a difference Winfield has made on this defense for the Vikings. Well, if the Eagles are going to have success today, they're going to have to stop Kevin Williams, who has become their Pro Bowl player. We saw last week he drew the double teams against the Green Bay Packers. So if they're going to stay with those double teams, some of these other guys are going to have to start getting some pressure. They can't just rely on Kevin Williams. Second down and 10. Westbrook is split out wide to the right of the formation down at the bottom and they throw to him. The throw is high. Westbrook gets it out to the 37, picked up five. Third down coming up from Philadelphia, offered on the stop. Well, that's one of the things that we're going to see a lot of. It really becomes a game within a game. How are the Eagles going to deploy Brian Westbrook, and how are the Minnesota Vikings going to answer that? They start him in the backfield. They split him out as a wide receiver. That then makes Willie Offord a safety come out and cover him. And I can tell you that Brian Westbrook, when he comes out and lines up at wide receiver, they do not care who they put on him, and that includes Antoine Winfield. They like that matchup. Third down and five. McNabb throws a pass incomplete. No flag as Freddie Mitchell was stumbling. Claiborne was defending for the Vikings, and it's three and out for Philadelphia. Yeah, Troy, I've got to say, though, that if they keep trying to play Willie Offord against Brian Westbrook, they are going to lose this game. The Vikings came in here talking about playing their best player, Antoine Winfield, a cornerback against Brian Westbrook wherever he went, but that safety Westbrook matchup will not work. Three pass plays from the Eagles with their first possession. Burleson on the return from inside the 25, gets it across the 30. They'll mark him out at the 32. Three and out each side. Vikings get it back. No score here in Philadelphia. Now you can fly on Southwest Airlines with our $39 to $149 internet specials to 59 destinations nationwide. You are now free to move about the country. Can inspiration make the SUV safer? It can with five-star government crash test ratings. Available side curtain airbags for all three rows and all-wheel drive. The best rating of any SUV tested for rollover resistance. Chrysler Pacifica. We didn't just make an SUV. We made a safety utility vehicle. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Now get zero plus. That means zero percent financing plus $2,500 bonus cash on Pacifica. Fox Tuesday. American Idol is back. Better. Now let me tell you, girl. And better. I feel the earth move from my feet. I feel the sky fall and dirt on all the land when you're near me. How do you think you did? Not too shabby. Television's number one series returns. American Idol premieres Tuesday at 8, 7 central on Fox. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. As we welcome you back, we remind you, you're watching Fox Sports broadcasting in the world's finest high-definition standard. And we are glad you're with us. The winner of this game will move on to take on the Atlanta Falcons, who just took apart the St. Louis Rams last night. Second possession for the Vikings. And they come out with four wide receivers. Second from the top. Yeah. 
They just get it away. The pass skips into Burleson. Covered by Sheldon Brown. You know, one of the things that the Vikings like to do is they like to spread people out in their offensive systems and then determine whether or not in the box, if they've got enough blockers in order to run the football or if the defense has too many defenders and they're going to check to the pass. That's a game that Philadelphia is playing right now. Sheldon Brown jumping in and out, trying to mess with Dante Culpepper and some of the checks that he likes to make at the line of scrimmage. Minnesota. Culpepper turned to Pete Morelli and got a timeout in quickly before the play clock expired. Burke, his center, snapped it to him. And the Vikings will talk about a second down and 10. Trying to figure out this Philly defense. In 1876, my great great grandfather, Adolphus Bush, started brewing a handcrafted beer right here in St. Louis called Budweiser. And that recipe of ingredients is the same today as it was when it was founded over 125 years ago. I think tradition is a very, very important thing because there are certain values uh, like quality and integrity that really should never change. Budweiser started as a great beer and is still that same great beer today. I will use two grenades when one would work just fine. I will flip a coin to decide which building to destroy and then blow them both up anyway. I will shoot first and ask questions later. I'm a mercenary and I love my job. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction in stores now. Read a team. Is this parents against kids? <laughs> parents, are you tired of your kids going over your family's wireless minutes? Yeah. And kids, tired of them hassling you just for talking? Well, good news. Sprint got rid of ugly overages. Protect your family from ugly overages. Now, 100 extra minutes only cost $5. Other plans charge at least $35. And unlimited Sprint PCS to PCS calling is included. Now you can save your money for the cleaners. Thank you. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. It's the best darn Super Bowl road show, period. Yeah! Live on Fox from Jacksonville. February 6th, only on Fox. Fox Tomorrow, Trading Spouses is all new. She's a clean queen. She's not. There are flies everywhere. Think this neat freak's gonna freak out? Oh my god! No, don't put it on me! Trading Spouses, meet your new mommy. All new at 8, 7 central tomorrow on Fox. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Budweiser. The bright color and crisp, clean taste you'll only find in the king of beers. Second down and ten for the Vikings. Culpepper hands to Bennett, who's met in the backfield and driven backwards. Simon was there with Curse. And a loss of three. We go back to that previous play right before the timeout. Yeah, and watch Dante Culpepper. He's trying to determine whether he should check run or check pass, and that's based on defensive alignment. The guy he's watching is right here, Sheldon Brown. And as you're going to see, Sheldon Brown's going to come in like he's going to play run and bounce out. He's going to continually give different looks to try to confuse Dante Culpepper. He has done that in each of the last three plays to try to confuse the offense. Third down and 13 with Noel and Moore in the backfield with Culpepper. Culpepper with all day down the middle, can't get it to Moss. Moss came free and Culpepper could not get it to him in the air and it's time for another Vikings punt. And really, Randy Moss was wide open on this play. Looks like he's running okay. A big gap in the middle of this zone defense and for the second time, to start this ball game, we've seen Dante Culpepper one hop, one in there. I think Dante right now is just thinking too much. They need to let him run the ball maybe a little bit, just get settled out there on the field. They changed some protection schemes, and you can see his mind's just working on overload right now. The punt by Bennett comes off the side of his foot. And it is down at the 47, only a 24-yard punt, and the teal was there to down it for the Vikings. Good field position for the Eagles. No score. Dude, what do you got in that thing? 
I got an amp, guitar, surfboard, ladder, and 12 2x4s. Velocity meets versatility. The all-new Hemi-powered Dodge Magnum. Open it up from either end. <laughs> Dodge Magnum with 5-star, the highest frontal crash test rating. Blue sky, smiling at me. Nothing but blue sky. Today's great companies are adapting to change using highly scalable HP Blade System servers powered by reliable Intel Xeon processors. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm full! Taco Bell's Big Bell Value Menu featuring the half pound beef and potato burrito with seasoned beef and golden potatoes. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the bun. Imagine how good it would feel to pay off your high-interest credit cards. And that's just one of the great things refinancing with AmeriQuest can help you do. I knew that I would not. Your own personal AmeriQuest loan specialist can help you lower your monthly payments. We'll even do the paperwork. So good! So good! Call 1-800-AmeriQuest now. Or go to AmeriQuest.com. AmeriQuest. The company that knows you are more. The great Terrell Owens who went down in that game against the Dallas Cowboys here on December 19th is sitting on this level watching while the Philadelphia offense which really hasn't had a great game for about six weeks. You can go back to that game here when they took apart the Green Bay Packers. Plays without him. Biggest play of the day and it's Westbrook inside the 40 to the 39 for 14 yards. You know, Brian Westbrook, one of the things that he does so well is the little cutback move. You'll see him set up to the outside, look like it's going to be the full stretch play. And now watch the quickness as he shoots right back through here. He has the tremendous vision, and he's not that fast a guy comparatively to like a Marshall Falk, something like that. But quickness, as quick as anybody. Right now, split out wide to the right of the formation at the bottom of the screen. Gets away from Mixon and fires the pass complete. Penalty flag on the play as Westbrook was there to haul it in. Westbrook caught a laser from McNabb, but this play is coming back. An eligible man downfield, number 71 offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. They get Jermaine Mayberry. This is really the first time since December 19th that this offensive line has been all together. You come back and take a look at Brian Westbrook and the job that he does and the way that he comes back to the ball. There's a lot of wide receivers in this league that don't have the ability to run back and catch the ball the way that Brian Westbrook does. In fact, I know he's regarded as a running back. But in talking with Andy Reid, he said there's no doubt in his mind that if they wanted to line him up and play him as a wide receiver the entire ball game, that he'd be one of the best in the league. Right now he's there at tailback on first down. McNabb to Westbrook. And Brian Westbrook stays on his feet, suffered a big hit, and got down inside the 35 to the 34, picked up 10. We talked about the offensive line. Hicks has missed time with a sprained left knee. Mayberry has strained left calf. But they're all in there now with Hank Fraley right in the middle. Trey Thomas is going to the Pro Bowl. And then I guess we already know the story, Troy, that you can highlight anybody you want on that list. But Westbrook is the key for this Philadelphia offense, especially now that T.O.'s no longer out there for Philadelphia. Yeah, he was basically the number two receiver when Terrell Owens was healthy. Now with Terrell Owens being down, obviously he slides up now to the number one guy. Play clock expired, and that'll cost Philadelphia five yards. Dorsey Levens got it on a handoff, but the play started too late. The late game. Offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. The Minnesota Vikings boast an all-pro on their defensive line, and he is the first Minnesota defensive player since John Randall accomplished that in 1998 to be an all-pro. That's Kevin Williams. The linebackers played much better last weekend in Green Bay. And in the secondary, Antoine Winfield is a difference maker back there for Mike Tice. 
and in particular Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator. Second and ten. Levins to the 36. Gain of three. You know, Chris Claiborne, who played so well in the game last week, not only did he have a sack of Brett Favre, I thought some of his pressures led to interceptions by Brett as well and they really had their linebacking core in general take a major step up Claiborne and EJ Henderson and even Don Terrius Thomas a week ago a guy that they really didn't trust in the ball game is going to get that opportunity number 54 there on the right hand side of your screen because of the outstanding game he played last week a perfect football game according to Mike Tice third down and seven McNabb over the middle it's dropped and a penalty flag comes in Westbrook couldn't haul in the pass and from the secondary a penalty flag comes in and they're calling holding prior to the pass holding 54 defense five yard penalty automatic first down the aforementioned Don Terrius Thomas yeah well Don Terrius Thomas he's their nickel linebacker rookie that earlier in the season was overwhelmed, but they feel like because of his speed and his ability to run that he's an advantage for them on the defensive side of the ball. But you're going to see that he makes a grab. Here he is right here, and he grabs as the guy's crossing. That's Freddie Mitchell, but it was somewhat of a natural pick. Brian Westbrook went in motion. He comes underneath Freddie Mitchell. That's why he was as open as he was. There wasn't much there from Thomas for the Vikings. That won't go against him. How pretty was that? Westbrook down inside the tent. It's Westbrook all over the field, and this time Donovan McNabb floated a beautiful pass in for 24 yards. You know, I don't know if I've seen this play before. You bootleg to one side and then throw all the way back across the field to the other side. I don't think E.J. Henderson could believe that they were actually trying to pull that off, but when you've got a guy like McNabb throwing the football. He can easily float it across the field. Just a great play call that time by Andy Reid. Well, and that's the liability of this defensive football team is the linebackers in coverage. When someone crosses their face, they've got to pick them up in man, even though it is a zone. On first and goal, Levins powering his way to the two. And on a windy day, Troy, to go back to the completion of Brian Westbrook, who is a pretty throw. A nice touch pass from McNabb to get it right to him. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about the inside matchup. This we got Jermaine Mayberry going up against Kevin Williams. And Kevin Williams, when he really picks it up, I mean, he's a load. And on that play there, Jermaine Mayberry had him one on one. That's a pretty good job. Second down and goal. Looking to throw, fires, and it's incomplete. Yeah, right. Ready, Mitchell, the intended receiver. I think to go back to what you were talking about, Joe, as far as Donovan McNabb and him throwing the football right now, I think those are some of the things that you look for when you talk about a guy who hasn't played much football in recent weeks. Are they going to be rusty? He's thrown the ball pretty well, and it's not really great conditions. There's a crosswind blowing out here today. Watch John Runyon on this play right here. He's going to get two knockdowns on one play. One two and allow McNabb to get out on the corner. Third down and goal. McNabb to his right fires. Touchdown Mitchell. You guys do realize what just happened there, don't you, Joe Buck? I'm going to let Joe Buck call that play. <laughs> Freddie Mitchell ends up catching the laser line drive throw from Donovan McNabb. And Freddie Mitchell, I guess, in essence, did the reverse moss from a week ago. And finished it by putting the belt back on. The people's champ. Freddie Mitchell is saying is I know we don't have Terrell Owens but we've got the salt in the slot we've got the people's champ we've got Fred X 7-0 Philly
Hey, you guys need a tow? Sure. Best friends, you're there when I need you. Best friends, you know I'm there for you too. Best friends, you're my pal, you're my buddy. When times are getting tough, you're true. It's great to have a friend like you. Best friends, it's great to have a friend like you. Best friends, it's great to have a friend like you. Best friends, Dodge Ram, it's everything you've ever dreamed of. In one powerful truck. Man, that was sweet. For you. You can ride in the truck next time. Now get zero plus. That means zero percent financing plus great package discounts plus bonus cash for total savings up to $9,100. Your family just got a whole lot bigger. Now that Singular has joined forces with AT&T Wireless to bring you the largest calling community in America. Talk to any Singular or AT&T Wireless customer for free. Can you ask someone to pass the gravy? All 46 million of them. Now buy the latest video phone and get one free. Only from the new Singular. Raising the bar. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Campbell's Chunky Soup. With big chunks of meat and veggies, it fills you up right. By Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL, get ready for the game. And by the new Singular Raising the Bar. If you go back to the start of that drive, it started with a poor punt, good field position. The drive was extended on a third down holding penalty on Dontarius Thomas. And the Philadelphia Eagles made the most of that opportunity. A beautiful completion of Brian Westbrook. And on third and goal, the touchdown throw to Freddie Mitchell. And it's 7 to nothing, Philadelphia. Mike Tice. I'm sure at this point wondering how his offensive line and I guess in particular how his quarterback is going to handle this Philadelphia defense. It has not been a good start as Dante Culpepper and the guys in front of him are trying to find some way to slow down Jim Josh Johnson's defense. Now, I really think at some point you have to get back to some basic part of football. You know they're out there thinking and trying to decipher this thing. Maybe run the football a little bit. They've gotten away from their running game. Let those big offensive linemen come off the ball. Settle your quarterback a little bit. Get back in your offense. So far, the Vikings have run six plays and have five yards to show for them. From just inside the five, it's Ontario Smith. Out of bounds at the 28. A return of 23 yards. So from the 28. The Minnesota Vikings offense back to work now trailing by seven. Not in our house, buddy. Not today. Oh, no! The thing was not about to go 99! Not today. Not tomorrow. Nobody coming in here! Not in our house! Not in our house! Visa, official card of the NFL in the house of the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots, where they accept no other card to get you in. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. It's chilly out there, so prepare. Prepare like never before for the kind of chili that rattles your bones and shakes you to your core. The forecast is chilly. Bring it on. That's what the true fans say. A goosebump raising chili that gets inside you and steals your breath away. Introducing Campbell's Chunky Chili. Cold Hard Facts. As the Super Bowl approaches, millions of bottles of refreshing frost brewed Coors Light will be tackled. Fans will get in touch with their inner linebacker. Grown men will dance. Games will be won. Voices will be lost. And tons of lucky hot dogs will be washed down by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. The coldest tasting beer in the world. And the official beer sponsor of Super Bowl 39. The playoffs are where moments are made. What's next?
Donovan McNabb on the touchdown looked out and saw the weakest cover linebacker for the Minnesota Vikings, Keith Newman, one-on-one -on -one against a wide receiver. Just an easy pitch and catch in the corner of the end zone. With Michael Bennett in the backfield, the Minnesota Vikings trying to get their feet underneath them offensively set up for the ball just shy of the 30. They hand to Bennett. Was hit first by Dahani Jones, and Michael Bennett ends up getting three. And right now, Jim Johnson in this defense is really doing a remarkable job of disguising. Watch the safety here. They show cover two to start, and then he drops in late before Dante Culpepper can adjust the play at the line. So now they're trying to run the ball right into the teeth of the defense. One of the real keys coming into this game, according to Jim Johnson, was we've got to disguise better. So far, they've done a great job of it. Second down and seven. Culpepper going for Moss. And the pass incomplete. Lito Shepard was downfield defending for Philadelphia. Boy, really an unusual looking play that time by Randy Moss. They were first looking at the hot read coming off of the corner slot. He wasn't there. And just like a week ago, he threw it up to Randy Moss. And Randy had his hand up in the air, but seemed to slow down as the ball came in and then reached out one hand. He just makes no sense at all. You've got to go ahead and try and Fade that ball and roll out of bounds and make the catch. And I'll tell you, Chris, down there on the field, there is a crosswind that appears to be having an effect on Dante Culpepper's passes. Third down and seven. Culpepper drops it off on a screen. Moore. Mawelny Moore picks up the first first down for the Minnesota Vikings out to the 40. Let's go down to Chris Myers. Yes, uh, Dante Culpepper was talking on the sidelines when it came off the last time, just what Troy Aikman referred to, because the wind is coming from the north, so it's in the face of the Minnesota Viking offense. If the ball is in the air, the wind will push it upward. That's why a few of his passes nosedived a little bit. So when the quarter changes, obviously the Vikings are talking about airing it out more downfield. Joe? Well, we've certainly seen that on a couple of passes of his. Yeah, the wind has gotten over under him and has held the ball in flight. Hand off Bennett. Michael Bennett with a big gain down inside the 45 to the 42. He picked up 18. You know, now they're really starting to come on the blitz. And the Minnesota Vikings, anytime teams blitz you, if you can hit this running and a running play, you're going to end up with some big plays. This time they're bringing everybody here on one side. And once you get past that first layer, there are no linebackers to support. So a big play. Getting back to the running game is really helping the Vikings right now. At the Philadelphia 42. Ontario Smith, they're keeping it on the ground, and Ontario Smith, he hit down at the 36, he got six. Next week, it's the NFC Championship game. We know the Falcons are in. If Minnesota wins, they'll play down in Atlanta. The Philadelphia Eagles win, the Falcons will come up here. It's next Sunday, 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific, beginning with America's number one pregame show. It's presented in Fox Sports High Definition. Second down and four. Play action. Call Pepper. Fires. Smith. Wow, what an effort. Donnie Jones was there, the linebacker for Philadelphia as Smith almost corralled that throw from Dante Culpepper. You know, one of the things the Eagles defensively were concerned with coming into the game was the scrambling of Dante Culpepper. They do not want him going up inside. And so they had to hold the point with the defensive tackles, but they've got to get pressure off the edges, and that pressure has to come from Javon Kirsch. They're not able to on that play, and that's what afforded Dante Culpepper so much time to try to find an open receiver. Right now, the Vikings are not inside Morton Anderson's field goal range. It's third down. Culpepper throw is incomplete. Pressure on the play by Curse. Well, they got pressure that time. They sure did. And Milwaukee Moore now in this new protection scheme that they have where they're sliding away. They're going to slide the line this way, and he's going to have to make the block on the backside. He steps up, and Javon Curse comes right around him. But I've got to say, Troy, any kind of a blocking scheme that has Milwaukee Moore trying to work against Javon Purse, you're not going to have your quarterback living very long. 
Bennett punts it into that win. Extra win stayed away, and it will be downed by Minnesota. They're going to mark it at the 8. 28-yard punt. Rod Davis was downfield to down it. Sunday, February 6th, one of the biggest names in all of music to be performing live during television's most watched event. Don't miss Paul McCartney in the AmeriQuest Mortgage Super Bowl 39 halftime show Sunday, February 6th, only on Fox. Well, one thing at least that the Vikings were able to do was they were able to put together some plays and some first downs to where at least now they've regained field position. The key for them on this drive defensively is to stop Philadelphia so that their offense can now get the ball with good position. Westbrook on the sidelines, and it's Dorsey Levins with some hard-earned yards. He picked up six. You know, and Dorsey Levins, he's been somewhat of a surprise here in the second half of the season. He came in early in the year after Correll Buckhalter had his season-ending injury, and initially he admitted that he was a little overweight, and it took some time for him to get into football shape, but he's the only player on this team that has won a Super Bowl ring, and obviously everyone else on this squad is hopeful to get one this year. Second down and four. McNabb throws Mitchell. Who already has a touchdown, now has a first down out to the 22. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, Terrell Owens continues to rehab that severely injured right ankle. I spoke with Eagles trainer Rick Burkholder earlier today about Owens' progress. He said T.O. has been very aggressive in his approach, and because of that, he's experienced a few setbacks. I asked him about the possibility of T.O. being available for the playoffs. Should the Eagles make it that far? He kind of cringed and said, we still have a long, long way to go. Back to you. Talking about the Super Bowl, thanks, Pam. Just over two minutes left in the first quarter, and that's Mixon who was there to meet Brian Westbrook on that flip, a gain of only one. Boy, what a fantastic play that time by Mixon. He saw that shovel pass coming all the way. Good veteran football player on the outside. And he's going to see McNabb coming right at him, and he's not going to take the bait at all. He says, uh-huh, I've seen this one before. Pretty heads-up play. Second down for the Eagles. Westbrook back in the game for Philadelphia. Head tail back and gets it. And Brian Westbrook is out to the 26. They'll mark him with forward progress out to the 27. He picked up four. You know, we haven't even mentioned yet uh, just how talented a guy this Brian Westbrook is. The only back in the NFL this season was 700 yards rushing, 700 yards receiving, and as Mike Tice told us, he is Waldo. He's the guy that we're focusing all of our attention on. No matter where he goes, we're finding Waldo. Mike Tice respectfully calling Brian Westbrook, Waldo, saying every time they come out of the huddle, it is up to our defense to find him, find where he is, and try and shut him down. McNabb airs it out. Lewis, Greg Lewis, Pete Williams, and they'll mark Lewis at the 21. The Eagles' speediest receiver is good for 53 yards. Yeah, Greg Lewis over the last couple of weeks, because of them not playing their starters, got a lot of work in those games. And he, you're right, Joe, the fastest player that they have on this squad. And he just comes up and runs right by Brian Williams. And that's exactly what they needed in order to get the ball down the field and create some big plays. And the reason that Lewis is so open is because they are double teaming Waldo on the outside. They've got a guy inside, a guy outside. Everybody else is one on one. A touchdown for Freddie Mitchell in the first quarter. A 7 to nothing lead after one for the Eagles. A symptom checker that allows people to isolate the warning signs of an illness and understand what they mean. Assessment tools that summarize risks and treatment options to discuss with their physicians. Just some of the features that make WebMD America's most trusted and most visited health site. Recommended by more physicians and relied on by more than 20 million Americans every month. WebMD, America's health site. Here, honey. Thank you. Good morning. Let's talk about the 
here's your ticket. <laughs> Thank you. Call me when you get there. I will. Tired of waiting for your reward? With Thank You From City, you get great rewards that are easy to earn, easy to redeem. That's a card you can count on. Hi, Jared here. You know, a McDonald's Big Mac has 560 calories. On the other hand, a tasty six-inch turkey sub at a Subway restaurant has 280 calories. That's exactly half the calories. And half the calories, well, that's how I became half the Jared. For delicious subs made right before your eyes with fresh ingredients on fresh baked bread, it's Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. What I know about the fate of this town is that the final battle is here. She's the child of darkness. Point Pleasant series premiere Wednesday after American Idol on Fox. Donovan McNabb in this Philadelphia Eagles offense at the Minnesota 21 with a first down. Vegas. McNabb with time. Throws and completes it to Pinkston. Donovan McNabb's last playoff game was the three interception evening against Carolina in last year's NFC Championship game. He is red hot right now. And what's surprising, Joe, that in that championship game, they came up and they pressed Todd Pinkston. He struggled with that. Now you've got Antoine Winfield, their best corner, and they have not yet pressed either of these receivers for the Philadelphia Eagles. And then obviously the offensive line doing a pretty good job. Donovan takes a hit late, but not before he makes the completion. McNabb, seven of his last eight. On first and goal, the pass, Westbrook, touchdown. What a pretty move by Brian Westbrook on that one. Westbrook looked like he was going to do one of those arrow routes where you go in and come back out, but instead he comes in, out, and back in again. That's a fake, and now you go right back by him. Pretty play. That was a 92-yard drive. Great job by the Philadelphia Eagles moving the ball and coming out of that one with a touchdown. Akers makes it 14 to nothing. Mitchell has one. Now Westbrook has one. McNabb, red, red hot. Eight of his last nine, including this. The touchdown at Donovan. Happy in Philly, up by 14. The half-ton Silverado has better resale value than Ford or Dodge. That's why it's the right truck. The official truck of an American revolution. My oldest friend. <laughs> My east. My west side. My private side. My heartbreak. My heartbeat. Life happens here. My car is American Express. What's that? Oh, it's a duvet cover. A what? A duvet cover. It's a decorative sham that also protects. <clears throat> Watch the game. The double quarter pound with cheese. Pound one. Oh! It's a throw pillow. <laughs> the NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Chevy and American Revolution. Supercharged for 2005 by American Express, by McDonald's, 
and by Miller. There's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Welcome back to Philadelphia. Brian Westbrook gets his first postseason touchdown. He was not healthy last year during the playoffs, out with a torn tricep. But he is healthy, rested, and ready to go. And he has been busy here in the first half. Taking it from inside the five, it's Moore. Mowelny Moore looking for a good return from Minnesota. And he gives it to him. Out across the 40. And down by 14. A return of 38 yards from the Weldy Moore, exactly what the Vikings needed right there. Let's go back to the touchdown now. Watch as they explode to this formation. They're going to move everybody in the offensive formation, and everyone defensively now has to crisscross and late try and find their man. It becomes very difficult. They go to the quick snap, and just about the time you find Westbrook, he's by you. Yeah, and that's because they go to that defense, and so it's an isolation on the middle linebacker. But the Vikings have got to do something else down there in the red zone. Dante Culpepper is the only quarterback this year to throw for over 300 yards against this Eagles defense. They hand to Bennett. Bennett gets one. The last possession, the Vikings had the majority of their success running the football. And that's something the Vikings haven't done well the last few weeks you see what Culpepper did in the first quarter last week at Green Bay nine of ten two for seven for eight yards so far but Culpepper had a record setting year he ended up with 39 touchdowns tied for fifth most in a single season as he slings it out to Burleson and Nate Burleson is written down by Brown Sheldon Brown brought down Burleson, a gain of only one, and let's go down to Chris Myers. Well, from the start of this game, the Viking energy level on the sideline has been very low, and Randy Moss, the ankle's okay, but his mood rather solitary. Opposite of last week, almost disinterested, and uh, the first emotion he showed was right after the Eagles' second touchdown when he got up on the field and cheered on the defense. Third down and eight. Moss has been shut out so far. Culpepper airs it out. Robinson, the intended receiver, and what an effort. What an effort and catch from Marcus Robinson. Lido Shepard was beaten on the play, getting to the football, and that was good for 40 yards. Yeah, and you got Goldberg doing a good job on Javon Kirst. We've already seen him get some pressure on Dante Culpepper, and then on the outside, Marcus Robinson working against Lido Shepard. Had one-on-one, -on -one. Michael Lewis, the safety, Trying to get over there and help over the top, but really, Marcus Robinson has great leapers, and he just went up after the ball and brought it in. And that was no accident. They game plan. They thought their big receivers could out jump these corners. Down to the 14 yard line is Ontario Smith. That first down carry good for two yards. You know, a big play by Minnesota in order to get down here to this end of the field because this is an important drive. They've not really done much up to this point in the first half, and trying to keep this game close and come away with points on this drive is extremely important. Well, I can tell you as a wide receiver, when you're playing with a bad ankle, you do get a little emotionally down because you know you can't do all the things that you could do otherwise. See what happened week two for Minnesota here in Philadelphia. Five times in the red zone, only one touchdown. Culpepper throws Campbell on the reception. And Kelly Campbell is going to be brought down about a yard and a half shy of a first down. Do good job in coverage that time by Nate Wayne, the linebacker. He had Moss underneath the whole way. And it just is one of those guys that has the ability to really run on the outside. Mark Semino out at the outside linebacker position. But for this game with these wide receivers, Wayne and Keith Adams may be better players. Third down and one for Minnesota. Paul Pepper couldn't find anything to his left, so he'll run. Dante Culpepper, and that big body in for the touchdown. That's why the Vikings are so good on third down. 
This was the best team in the NFL on third down all year, and it's because of that factor, Culpepper pulling it down and getting big yards. And the interesting part about it, Joe, is that Jim Johnson, defensive coordinator, said we're okay as long as Dante Culpepper scrambles to the sidelines. We don't want him scrambling up the middle. Well, this time they do get him running to the sidelines, but not before he's able to get into the end zone. And Javon Curse that time came crashing down and lost contain, allowing Culpepper to escape on the scramble. What a perfect answer from the Minnesota Vikings, who were down 14 to nothing. Dante Culpepper rushing for the touchdown. And it's a seven-point game in Philadelphia. I can't taste my beer. I can't taste my beer. I can't taste my beer. Every year, thousands suffer from taste loss in silence, and the results are devastating. I can't taste my beer. There is hope, thanks to great tasting, less filling Miller Lite, with more taste than Bud Light and half the carbs. I can taste my beer. Get the facts at preventtasteloss.com, because taste loss isn't your fault. Ignoring it is. Miller, good call. Hell wants him. What were those things? They were after me. Heaven won't take him. It's personal, isn't it? They don't like you, John. Earth needs him. Something's coming. I can feel it. Keanu Reeves. Constantine. This film is not yet rated. It starts February 18th. It's the biggest aviator adventure ever. No! And all these Simpsons, then on Arrested Development, catch the softball game. This game goes way, way back. That gives scoring a whole new meaning. We lost our entire outfield and a couple of court cases. An all new episode. It all starts at 8, 7 Central tonight on Fox. Not only did Dante Culpepper run it in from seven yards out, but he was three for three for 48 yards on that drive. And he has accounted for 55 of the 58 total yards. He has been a one-man gang all season. And on that last drive, the Vikings needed him to answer the 14 to nothing score put up by the Philadelphia Eagles. 14 to seven now. And it's J.R. Reed. Reed with a lane to run, and J.R. Reed all the way into Viking territory. Brought down at the 46, a return of 48 yards by J.R. Reed. Big return by Reed. Great field position for the Eagles up seven. That was a Cadillac. New Cadillac STS. Assume nothing. How was your day? Good. Yours? Good. <sighs> Break the routine and live a little. Welcome to Chili. Introducing Chili's new Build Your Own Big Mouth Burger. Handcrafted with your choice of over 20 unique toppings. You pick it, we build it. Build Your Own Big Mouth Burger. New at Chili's. Come on, live a little. Excuse me, are you still relying on your broker for investment ideas? You got an alternative? I'm listening. Are you kidding? Who's got time to do it yourself? I invest for myself at TD Waterhouse. They make it easy to come up with my own investment ideas. With tools like their stock screeners, TD Waterhouse helps you find investment ideas in the time it takes to make a cup of coffee. You can do this. Switch to TD Waterhouse, the alternative to Schwab and higher priced brokers like Merrill Lynch. Whatever you do, don't blink. Will the Minnesota Vikings be able to come up with an answer for Brian Westbrook? Mitchell a touchdown in this game. Westbrook has been all over the field. He has a touchdown reception in this game. And it's 14-7, Eagles on top in this divisional playoff. 
for the Minnesota Vikings. 10-29 left in this first half. And there's the day so far for Brian. McNabb throws. Pinkston can't make the catch. And some of the fans here in Philadelphia get on Pinkston, who's been under heavy criticism since T.O. went down. Back to the touchdown. Javon Kirsch tries to take an inside track, and Adam Goldberg chops him right down. And then on the outside, Jermaine Wiggins with a basketball screen or a little booty block, whichever you prefer to call it. Jermaine Wiggins, a guy who grew up in East Boston, played his athletics as a kid at the local boys club. Might have learned that move there. The pass incomplete. L.J. Smith, and that draws a flag. They're going to get Willie Offord coming up the back of L.J. Smith. Pass interference, 24 defense, automatic first down. Corey Chavis, the man offered, is replacing Chavis out with a broken left elbow. Yeah, they got the call on uh, L.J. Smith. Then look on the outside on Pinkston. Brian Williams finally comes up and tries to put a jam on Todd Pinkston, which is something I think they're going to have to continue to try to do. And there's the penalty on Willie Offord, and I thought it was a pretty good call. He got there a little bit earlier before the ball arrived. But they're finally starting to show that in order to slow this passing team down, they're going to have to come up and challenge it. Westbrook at the top of your screen. McNabb looked that way. Now fires, and the pass is incomplete. Russell was staring at an interception as a flag comes down, and it will be pass interference. The call, and the question is against which side? Yeah. Pass interference. 26 defense. Automatic first down. They get Antoine Winfield. Yeah, you could see Winfield as the double move was taking place, and really the ball was in the air. Just literally reach out and grab the receiver. And one of the problems is if this pass rush doesn't get there the way it has not been getting there thus far in this game, then McNabb is going to have all day to pump fake and look one way, go the other way. That was about his third receiver on that one. They have to start getting some pressure. So a first down for Philadelphia. Up by seven, McNabb over the middle. L.J. Smith lost the football into the end zone for a touchdown. Freddie Mitchell. In the right place at the right time and an unbelievable break for the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't, sometimes you need a little luck in this game. You're going to see L.J. Smith. He's one-on-one -on, -one on a linebacker. That's a mismatch for the Philadelphia Eagles. He makes a move and gets open. He has a shot to get into the end zone, and Winfield comes in and gets a helmet on the ball. And Freddie Mitchell in the right spot. I have never seen anything like that in watching football. Have you ever seen one fly forward like that for a touchdown? That's what Andy Reid's been doing with this time off. <laughs> Drawing up plays like that as Akers makes it a 14-point game again. Freddie Mitchell getting some first-half headlines. The hit, the flip, the result. Seven more points. Unbelievable points for the Eagles. Coming to DVD. Can you be perfect? Move fast. That's what I'm talking about! Play hard. <laughs> Score big. Their expectations could be any higher. One of the greatest sports movies ever made. Yeah. That's the way they play ball. <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Own the DVD Tuesday. Clearly, it's not that tube top. Three Sundays in a row. What the? Now is the winter of your discontent. Family Guy. A full hour at 9, 8 central tonight on Fox. Fasten your seatbelt and crank up the defibrillator. Help me! Somebody! 
Because 24 is back with a vengeance. All units, move in. We make a preemptive strike. We kill our own Secretary of Defense. Over 30 million people got hooked on the most exhilarating thrill ride on TV. This trial is only the beginning. Don't miss your chance to jump on for the bumpy ride. Jack, make this work. 24, an all-new episode on its new night at 9, 8 central, tomorrow on Fox. Paris and Nicole are back, and this time, they're interns. So which one of you is planning to die? But will they perish in funeral services? One, two, three. No! They're just getting human stuff well, it's all slippery. The Simple Life Interns. No! Wednesday, January 26th on Fox. There is the scoring drive after the terrific kick return by J.R. Reed. It's Freddie Mitchell on what is a four-yard fumble recovery. No touchdown pass for Donovan McNabb. Ten-yard touch, ten-yard catch by L.J. Smith. And then the fumble recovery by Freddie Mitchell. It's 21-7. Noelle Moore. Another good kick return for Noelle Moore as he is out at the 39. Back to the big penalty that kept that drive alive. And the penalty is going to be on 56, not 26. E.J. Henderson late in the play. He's just simply going to grab the receiver as Donovan McNabb was looking all over the field. Yeah, and then on the touchdown, it would again was E.J. Henderson who's trying to get there to make a play on L.J. Smith. And Antoine Winfield does all he can do, but Freddie Mitchell alertly finds the ball and is able to bring it in for the touchdown. But as you mentioned, Joe, all of that was set up by the return of J.R. Reed. Three times in this first half. As Randy Moss gets his first catch of the day, and he is dragged down from behind by Jeremiah Trotter. Three times, and those two get into it. So Moss and Trotter rough it up after the play. The only point I was making is three times the Minnesota Vikings because of a defensive penalty given the Philadelphia Eagles a first down and two times it's led to touchdowns. Yeah and that's the problem because they know that in order to work the underneath routes the linebackers have to be a factor and so far they have been but in a negative way. Over nine to play. Minnesota. Second team timeout. There will be a 30 second timeout. Well, they gave Dante Culpepper the timeout, even though it looked like and sounded like the play clock had expired. A flag was on the field, but they just pick it up. And I think what Mike Tice is saying is that you guys should have reset the play clock at the end of the Randy Moss catch. They started the 40 second clock, but obviously there was a little scuffle that went on. So the play clock ran down, and Mike Tice comes out on the field and is trying to tell those guys, listen, when something like that happens, you have to reset the 40. And I, I don't know, though, if Dante Culpepper turned to the referee and let him know. Generally, the quarterback can turn and alert the official that they did not reset the clock, and they'll generally get it. But, yeah, that's a disappointment if the reason they had to burn the timeout was because the officials didn't correctly reset the clock and give the Vikings enough time to execute the play. We saw Randy Moss and Jeremiah try to get into it. And obviously Randy Moss with what happened last weekend at Lambeau Field and pantomiming the mooning of the fans down there received the $10,000 fine from the NFL. Then his reaction during the week. We talked to Mike Tice. He said, I believe I know Randy Moss well enough to believe that he thinks enough's enough that that will not continue on into this game in Philadelphia. As Culpepper has time and drops it off to Burton. And Burton has plenty of room to run, and he is knocked down at the 30. Big play of 16 yards and a first down for the Vikings at the Philadelphia 30-yard line. And you take a look at Randy Moss, and you don't really know for sure if that ankle's bothering him or not. As he comes off the ball, you're going to see him in motion. It appears as if he's just jogging and not a part of the play. Then he takes off, and sometimes he'll try to lull a defender to sleep, but by him running down the middle, it opened things up there underneath. First down at the 30. Blitz coming, and the Vikings run it with Ontario Smith. 
He's to the 26. Five yards for Ontario Smith, and Javon Kirst made the stop. Well, one of the things that the Minnesota Vikings are so happy about is the return of Matt Burke to health. He has been such a key to their running game. He's the center for the Minnesota Vikings. And his ability to get out and pull and lead those plays <laughs> is a big reason why the Minnesota Vikings had not been running very much. But now that he's healthy, they feel like they can get back to it. Second down and six. Blitz coming from the Eagles. Handoff is to Ontario Smith. And Ontario was able to keep his footing long enough to get it to the 20. And it depends on the spot as to whether that's enough for a first down. You know, one of the things the Eagles like to do is they like to bring Jeremiah Trotter and just have him blow everything up. He's the middle linebacker, and he doesn't always have to get there. That time he takes on Matt Burke. But by his presence coming up the middle, it forces the runner to get to the outside. And Jeremiah Trotter, he'll do that in the run game. He'll also do that within the passing game. But Jim Johnson feels that that's what he does best, just trying to blow up the interior of that offensive line. And he got there so quickly, Matt Burke had no choice but to hold him. I don't know how in the world they didn't make that call. You look at what a difference Trotter made when he took over in the middle. And the rushing yards allowed per game, one through eight. They had Simino there. And Simino right now, after being moved, to the outside is out with a strained ankle. And then when Trotter came in, it was an immediate difference. Third down and inches. They faked like Culpepper was going to go for the quarterback sneak, and it's incomplete. Defending was Brown and Lito Shepard. Not a bad idea, but the Philadelphia Eagles defense didn't bite. But I've got to believe that they did that knowing they were going to go for it on fourth down. You saw Dante Culpepper fake like it was quarterback sneak, hold it for a second, pull up, and then take a shot at the sideline. But they did it with the intention here of going for it on fourth down. Fourth and inches. And Culpepper takes it himself. I'll tell you what, that's close. Where the side judge is running in, it looks like they've got it, but I didn't see much movement interior there. Boy, Jeremiah Trotter that time not only came on the blitz, but got down so low that Matt Burke couldn't root him out of there. It's a first down for Minnesota. Watch Trotter get down there and just pile that whole thing up. Boy, is he a load coming through on those blitzes. Well, you talk about Jeremiah Trotter. He had Pro Bowl seasons when he was here in his first stint. Then he went off to Washington, did not play particularly well, came back off the knee surgery, and this scheme really fits him well. Handoff is to Ontario Smith. And there's Trotter again. And here's the biggest point about Jeremiah Trotter. He wanted more money. He didn't get it. He had a clash with Andy Reid. He was big enough to come back here. Andy Reid was a big enough man to bring him back here. And how did Trotter get back into the good graces of the Eagles? By working hard on special teams. Just watch Trotter. He's going to get blocked initially, get off of Matt Burke, and still come back around and make the play. He has been so intense on the field to this point. Still only 27 years old at second down and seven. Culpepper, Ontario Smith was left alone, and Ontario has a Minnesota first down at the eight. I'll tell you what, you've got to be impressed with Dante Culpepper and what he does. Every time he's asked to come out and kind of answer the bell, so to speak, when an opposing offense goes down the field and scores, he's been able to do it. And I know that at the end of their regular season, they struggled and they did not win a lot of football games, but it certainly had nothing to do with Dante Culpepper. In fact, over the last 16 games, 14 touchdowns with only one interception. On first and goal, Robinson incomplete, out of bounds. Second and goal. The jam at the line of scrimmage that time by Lito Shepard, I believe it was, on the outside, forced Marcus Robinson to go so wide there was no room left on the field for Dante Culpepper. That is just too small of an area. And he came close, Robinson did, but I think that first foot is going to come down out of bounds. Good call by the officials. Randy Moss at the bottom.
just got it away. Culpepper. Inside the five, they'll mark him at the three. It's third and goal, and that was a design draw by Dante Culpepper. That's exactly right, Joe. Yeah, and that's one of the weapons that they have because of his ability, not only his, his ability to run, but because of his size. And you spread a defense out like that, and then you've got a blocker for a defender, and it's one-on-one -on -one matchups, and it's a matter of Culpepper at that time just finding a lane. You know, and I don't think they necessarily have to get the touchdown on this down. It brings the possibility of a run back in here because they may well go for it on fourth. I agree. If they can pick up two or three yards here, I would fully expect them to go for it on fourth. Cole Pepper looking to throw. In trouble. Gets rid of it. Up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Randy Moss, the closest to it. Michael Lewis and Lito Shepard were defending for Philadelphia. And it, they're saying that they're going to go for it still, even with the incompletion. Uh, now they change their mind. Yeah. yeah, Morton Anderson will come on the field, and they will try to close down the little the lead a little bit, which is right now 14 points. And it's really one of the first times that uh, we've seen Javon Curse today. Adam Goldberg's been doing a nice job on him. 21-yard try. And now Farad. Throws it through the back of the end zone, and the Eagles will take over. You are not going to believe what happened on this play. Randy Moss was supposed to stop on the sideline, and Gus Farad was going to come up and hit him with the pass, and Randy Moss jogging off the field instead of stopping at the line of scrimmage and going back and making the play. You see him saying, get out there, get out there, but nobody told Gus Farratt, and so when he raised up, Moss wasn't there. He looks right for Randy Moss on the left sideline. He's not there, and Farratt has no idea of what's going on. Well, that's clearly on the sideline there because it's obvious that Randy Moss was not certain what the play was. Initially, he thought they were going to run the fake. Then, for whatever reason, he looked to the sidelines. Then they made it look like they were not going to go for the fake. That's on the sideline right there, not communicating properly to those guys in the huddle. And you can see Tice trying to call timeout. They did not get the timeout. Instead, turn it over on downs as Westbrook bounces it outside. And he's forced down to the nine. You know, my guess is they said the very first time that we get down in some kind of field goal formation, we're going to go to that. I cannot imagine the scenario. And Randy Moss knows that they blew an easy touchdown. He would have had an easy walk-in play. I think the New England Patriots were the ones that At ran St. it Lewis. earlier this season against St. Louis. And that was just going to be a gift touchdown. And obviously, Gus Farad had no idea he wasn't there. Although you'd think he'd at least turn around and take a look or call timeout if he saw him running off the field. Westbrook is lined up wide at the top of your screen as they hand it off. Out to the 10-yard line as Dorsey Levins picked up one, and now a big third down coming up for this Minnesota defense. Yeah, and this becomes a big third down here because the Philadelphia Eagles have been able to convert 67% here in the first half on third down, and when you get a team like this backed up, you've got to be able to step up and stop them on third down and give the ball back to your offense with not only good field position, but with an opportunity to go in and score prior to the end of this half. Missed out on the opportunity. Sorry, Joe, there. Not at least coming away with three points by electing to fake the field goal. Minnesota with only one timeout remaining. It's third down and four. McNabb. Throws and left alone is Pinkston. Absolutely wide open for a first down. 13 yards. Unbelievable move by Todd Pinkston this time. And he got some help from McNabb as he came in, sold the slant. That's when McNabb did the pump fake, and Brian Williams jumped all over it. Pinkston was wide open. But Chris, Brian Williams and Antoine Winfield are playing right into their hands. I mean, they knew coming in that the problems that the receivers have had for Philadelphia, minus Terrell Owens, is the press coverage. We've seen it twice the entire first half. I couldn't agree more. On first down, Levins. A nice run by Dorsey Levins for another Philadelphia first down. He got 11. And somewhere, Ricky Manning Jr. is saying, didn't you guys watch the championship game last year and what we did to Todd Pinkston? You can't let him come off the ball running free. He's one of the fastest guys on this team, a major deep threat. Right now, they're looking at Jermaine Mayberry 
on the sideline so he is not in his right guard spot. I'm not sure it matters that much though because they have had so many guys in and out at the guard position this year. Now Steve Shulo goes in and he's played a lot. A lot. On first down, McNabb throws the pass complete to Perry. That ball's alive. And that ball is a live ball and the Vikings have it. Perry lost the football along the sideline and as the ball was laying there, Claiborne was there to pick it up for the Vikings. Exactly what happened in last night's game with the Atlanta Falcons when Michael Flick laid it down. It goes to the ground. Nobody touches him. He's alive. The ball's alive and they come up and get it. The question is, was he in contact with the ball when he was on the sideline? I would think that would at least be worth a challenge. Claiborne had been out of bounds, came back in and recovered the fumble with the ball laying there on the ground. The Vikings are going to come up and try to run a play quickly. But I think the ruling is a defensive player can be out of bounds and be the first to touch. An offensive player cannot. So by the fact that he reestablished himself, I believe he has the right to pick up that ball. Now the question may be, Philadelphia is challenging the ruling on the field that the defender and the receiver were both out of bounds in the recovery. Yeah, see, that's what I think is, was he on the sideline when connection to the ball, and therefore the ball would have been out of bounds by rule? A challenge. We'll come back and get the answer after this. Brown keeps my customers in the loop. Used to be they didn't know when they'd get their sunglasses, so they'd call me. Now, with UPS, my customers get an email letting them know when their order is going to arrive. It's like I answer their questions, even before they ask. How'd you do that? I'm telepathic. Email notification for better customer service. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Is this Parents Against Kids? <laughs> parents, are you tired of your kids going over your family's wireless minutes? Yes. And kids, tired of them hassling you just for talking? Totally. Well, good news. Sprint got rid of ugly overages. Protect your family from ugly overages. Now, 100 extra minutes only cost $5. Other plans charge at least 35 And unlimited Sprint PCS to PCS calling is included. Now you can save your money for the cleaners. Thank you. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Pete Morelli is looking at a couple of things under the hood, so to speak, about that play along the sideline. And first we look at whether Perry, who had made the catch, came down and then lost the football, whether he was out of bounds, as Troy said, still connected to the football. And then Claiborne, the other part of it, did he get both feet back in to reestablish himself back in the field of play before picking up the football for Minnesota? Yeah, it did not appear that his left foot was down prior to going down to pick up the ball and it had not established himself back in the field to play with both feet. So that's the word we get from the league that they're looking at both pieces and anytime they go to a review they can look at any part of the play. As we again look at the front end of it and Josh Perry coming down I think the ball is clearly out and away from his body before he gets onto the sideline and is in essence out of bounds with the football. But here's the other part for Minnesota. Claiborne with his right foot down, picks up the football, then the left foot comes down. And Pete Morelli has seen enough to make his decision. After reviewing the play, Minnesota defender number 55 went out of bounds 
came back in, did not reestablish himself. Therefore, it's ruled a fumble out of bounds. Philadelphia ball, first and ten. Second down on the 41-yard line. It was a first down catch and run, and Josh Perry exhales as here he nearly gave the Minnesota Vikings a chance to put up some points, some points here before the end of the first half. 2-10 remaining, and it's second down for Philadelphia with a ball at their own 37. And how many breaks have the Philadelphia Eagles gotten? There have to be some fans in Philadelphia saying, maybe all these years of bad luck starting to come full circle now. They get the touchdown out of the fumble that goes to Freddie Mitchell. Now this one clearly a fumble. They don't reestablish coming back in. A lot going in Philadelphia's favor right now. They're going to move the ball up to the 41 yard line and they will make it second down and three for the Eagles with now 2 11 remaining in the half. Hey, hey, Second down, they set up a screen for L.J. Smith. And the big tight end with blocking in front of him is knocked down at the 40. 19 yards, a minute 53 remaining. We'll take a timeout. Philly with the lead and the football. Today's game on Fox is brought to you by UPS. What can Brown do for you? When it comes to shipping, talk is cheap, mistakes aren't. Brown's got the horsepower. They've got the planes, the technology. Truth is, I don't care how they do it. I just care that my packages get there on time. Hey, all I ask for is perfection. Other than that, I'm pretty easy. UPS delivers more packages on time than anyone. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Not in our house, buddy. Not today. Oh, no! This ain't going down! Not today, not now! Not today! Not today! Not tomorrow! Nobody coming in here! Not in our house! Not in our house! Visa, official card of the NFL and the house of the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots, where they accept no other card to get you in. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. From the minute my son was born, I knew I wanted to be uh, that dad. Uh, the guy who can show you how to throw a perfect spiral. Fixing bikes and skateboard ramps. Going to ball games. My father was that dad, and now I've become that dad. That's why I bought a Saturn. Introducing the seven-passenger 2005 Saturn Relay with the security of OnStar and DVD player standard. Right now, every 2005 Relay is available with five-year, 60,000-mile worry-free ownership. It's a 21-7 Philadelphia lead, and Donovan McNabb and the Eagles facing the questions all week, and really for the past three weeks or so, how are you going to come out in your first game in the playoffs when all of a sudden it all counts again? Are you going to be rusty? Are you still going to have that edge? I think so far, so good. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think they've come out here and looked very sharp here in the first half. On first down, McNabb throws up his back foot and fires incomplete. Westbrook the closest to it. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, as you may have noticed, Eagles right guard Jermaine Mayberry is back out on the field. The trainers put a sleeve and a huge brace over his elbow. Uh, they say he's got an elbow strain. They tape that down. He's giving it a go. Back to you. All right, thanks, Pam. So Mayberry back in. Shulo is out. And it's second down and 10 for the Eagles. Well, it's been a tough year for Jermaine Mayberry. He's missed a lot of time between calf injuries and then that elbow. He's missed three of the last four games coming into this one, even with even with some of the rest last week, and just been battling that all year. On second down and 10, Westbrook did all he could. Winfield was in his face. The winner of this game will move on to take on the Atlanta Falcons and taking St. Louis and the way they played guys out of it for a moment defensively and special teams wise you can't help but come away impressed with what the Falcons did last night they just crammed it right down the Rams throat yeah I just uh, really was amazed and I think we are now beginning to see the difference between some of these top seeded teams and the teams that managed to get into the playoffs with that 500 record and a 
timeout taken by Philadelphia. That's their first. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will have highlights from this game. Their analysis, the Fox Sports ticker, has up to the second scores and stats, and then we'll have a preview of the Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots, and uh, I, for one, can't wait to watch that one. That's going to be a fun battle. Oh, I don't think there's any question, and uh, I know a lot of people right now, especially because of the injuries that the New England Patriots are faced with, and the way Peyton Manning and this Indiana Indianapolis Colts offense and weapons that they have, but something tells me, Chris, that Bill Belichick will have something up his sleeve that <laughs> they have He does. Seen. Yeah, he really does. And for this game, Donovan McNabb, really, for a guy that's essentially taken a month off, has just been phenomenal. I mean, he's come out here, made every throw. Sometimes when we see him and he's a little rusty, he comes out and throws the ball high and it gets away from him. But not today. He's been right on the money all day. And there was really no mystery as to what the Philadelphia Eagles were going to try and do coming in. He kept hearing the name Westbrook, and people around the country might not be aware of how talented this guy is. But we have seen a lot of Brian Westbrook. It's third down and 11. And this Minnesota defense needs a stop. McNabb with time fires, and the pass complete. First down, Greg Lewis. Okay, that was a heck of a catch there by Greg Lewis. Donovan McNabb sees the pressure. He checks to it to block it up. And Greg Lewis, a guy, again, who hasn't gotten a lot of reps, but runs great routes, gets in and out of the breaks well. It's a good thing because otherwise he never would have been able to get back to that ball. McNabb looking to set up the screen. And it's bobbled. Levins could not come down with a pass. And a penalty flag is out and on the field on that play. I think you're going to get a lineman down the field because the timing was fouled up on the screen. An eligible man downfield, number 63 offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. They get Hank Fraley, the center. And Hank saying, what took you guys so long, man? I'm sitting down there counting, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. The screen's supposed to be gone, and I'm 20 yards down the field. I tell you, I remember back in 2001 when they lost Bubba Miller, their starting center for the year in training camp, and they brought in Hank Fraley to replace him, and everybody thought, oh, no, we don't have the right guy. We're going to be weak at that spot. The guy hasn't, hasn't missed a game since. The legend of Honey Buns was born shortly thereafter. That's right. First down and 15. Hand off is to Lemons. And he's knocked down inside the 30 at the 28 by Kevin Williams. A gain of six. 28 seconds left in this first half. Well, the premiere of American Idol is coming up on Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, a two-hour season premiere. You know, I think the first few shows are my favorites when they have all the people on there that sing like I do. <laughs> You know, that's, those are the guys I like to, the shebang guys, and, you know, all those people are the ones that I like to I watch. I have to say, though, list, listening to Tony Saragusa yeah, to try to do that last night, it took me an extra hour to try to fall asleep after that. <laughs> yeah, they may not get much viewer, much viewership if that's what it's going to be. Second down and nine. Right now, in case you're wondering, it would be a 46-yard field goal try from this point. Or David Akers, who's got a great left leg, a strong left leg, and with the wind whipping around here in this stadium. The Eagles offense would like to make it a little easier on them, if not get it in the end zone. McNabb with forever over the middle. Kingston makes the catch, and he's got a first down inside the 10. And the Eagles will spend their final timeout with 16 seconds left. You know, that's just absolutely awful on the part of the pass rush from the Minnesota Vikings, Troy. They have not even gotten close all day. Well, you know, Mike Tice yesterday said we may not get a sack, but he said that in reference to we're going to try to contain Donovan McNabb, and they certainly were able to contain him, but you got to get some pressure. There's not a quarterback in this league that if you give him this kind of time to throw the football, that he's not going to find somebody open down the field. And one of the reasons why he had so much time was because of the double team there with John Runyon and Jermaine Mayberry on Kevin Williams. Well, and one of the reasons that they can't afford to rush more guys and try and blitz and bring some pressure 
is they haven't been able to come up with an answer for Brian Westbrook. And I think you got to look at what the Eagles have done here in this first half. They've got a touchdown drive that's 92 yards long. And here this drive began on the four yard line. And here they are now on the nine knocking on the door for another touchdown. Remember this drive started when the Minnesota Vikings tried to fake it on fourth down and Moss was not on the field. Turned it over on downs and now the Eagles are looking for six as they throw to L.J. Smith incomplete. Ryan Williams was out there for the Vikings at second and goal. Ten seconds left and remember Philadelphia's out of timeouts. You know, that's some of the stuff there that L.J. Smith really does a good job of. He had started the year very slowly, but for a guy his size, does a good job of getting out of some breaks. And I know talking with Donovan McNabb and Andy Reid a couple of days ago, they really felt that L.J. Smith was going to be a huge factor in this ball game. He's already had a couple of catches here in the first half, but I would expect more of it as we go into the second half. The number three offensive team inside the red zone. During the regular season, McNabb finds Levins and he is hit immediately. What a good play, and it's no surprise that it's Winfield. And with that, going over the middle and no timeouts remaining, it stays a 14 point game. You have got to be kidding me. You simply cannot make that pass. You throw it in the end zone or you throw it nowhere. Tice is almost smiling, leaving the field as they just dodged at least three points. 21 7 at the half. Piece of halftime show coming up. After this, from your local Fox station. It's Idol Tuesday on Fox. Don't miss the year's biggest premiere when American Idol returns. The judges are ready. Competition will be a lot tougher. The talent is ready. I keep on falling. Are you ready for the best season yet? We've discovered better talent this time than all three seasons put together. It's finally here. The most watched show in America. American Idol premieres at 8, 7 Central Tuesday on Fox. A controversial website targets high school cheerleaders. Parents speak out tonight at 10. Two amazing vehicles. One great offer. Right now, qualified returning Daimler Chrysler lessees can get a 2005 Jeep Liberty Sport with the legendary capability of Jeep for just $199 a month. Or choose a 2005 Chrysler Pacifica with the highest rollover resistance rating of any SUV tested for just $199 a month. Or if you purchase, get 0% financing plus up to $2,500 in bonus cash. The choice is up to you. Take your pick at your Chrysler Jeep dealer today. Now you can get great tasting steak without a grill. Introducing the new steak, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwich from Dunkin' Donuts. Served on a freshly baked bagel. Have your steak in the morning and give your grill the day off. Dunkin' Donuts, bring yourself back. When the doctor said it was cancer, I was so scared. Like I was all alone in the world. But at the Cancer Institute of New Jersey at Cooper, my own personal nurse was always there for me. And Cooper has access to the latest research, technology, and innovative therapies. So I had more options than surgery. For the first time, I felt calm. That's when I knew I was at the right place. That was two years ago. by Land Rover. There's a destination for everyone. The Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Get ready for the game. All right, folks, we consider big boy Superman, but have you ever wondered if Howie Long can leap a building in a single bound? Or maybe you just want to know which NFL players he thinks are the toughest. Then check out the superhero edition of Howie Long's Tough Guys, presented by Chevy Silverado SS, as we welcome you back to Studio A here in Los Angeles. 
And again, halftime action boy Donovan McNabb on fire, but for that mistake, they're closing out the action. Superb. Randy Moss, Vikings looking to upset the Eagles, but it's Donovan McNabb rolling right, man-to-man -man coverage. Finds Mitchell wide open, four-yard little out route, touchdown, seven to nothing. It is the Eagles over the Vikings. There is Terrell Owens happy. Then McNabb back. Finds his man Westbrook. Westbrook won the hitch to allow the coverage to get behind him. Slides underneath. Touchdown 14 to nothing. Back come the Vikings. Culpepper running it from seven yards out. Touchdown. Makes it 14 to 7. And then McNabb to LJ Smith. There's your catch. Here's your hit by Antoine Winfield. Ball pops up. Right place, right time. Freddie Mitchell, 21 to 7. It is the Eagles over the Vikings and a good ball game at the half. Randy Moss, only one catch for the Minnesota Vikings. And speaking of Randy Moss, Jimmy Johnson, there was a botched field goal attempt that involved, should have involved Randy Moss. Yeah, JB, a, a couple of weeks ago, I watched Minnesota work on this hideout play off the fake field goal. What's supposed to happen is Randy Moss is start, supposed to walk off toward the sideline, stop, and then Gus Perot, the holder, will throw the ball out to Moss for the touchdown. For some reason, Moss starts to stop, and then he goes on off the field. He could have been, and I've got to just speculate here, that players that did not know the fake was on were saying, get off the field, get off the field. Mike Tice tried to call timeout when he saw that Moss was coming off the field. Poor communication. Well, and then Philadelphia subsequently drives the ball 87 yards down the field. Protection has been so good for Donovan McNabb. A gaffe at the end, allowing the clock to run out instead of throwing the ball out of bounds, kicking a field goal, turning it into a two-touchdown game. If the, if Donovan McNabb, they continue not to pressure him, he will kill them in the pocket, yeah. which he's been yeah. there. His progression should have been not a progression. Right. But the play was called, Jimmy, and he should have gone to number one guy, covered, throw it away, because you need three points, and you want to make you want to make sure that at the end of the football game that that field goal doesn't come back to haunt you. Right now, they still have a cushion that they're holding on to, 21-7. All right, folks, game coming up a little later today. It'll be Indianapolis and New England. Peyton Manning, we know he is O for Foxborough, arriving a little more than an hour ago at Gillette Stadium. Will the Colts be able to do it? Let's check in live and get the latest from our guy, Brian Baldinger. All right. All right, JB, look, uh, Peyton Manning out there doing his calisthenics right now. The first guy I might talk to today down here on the stadium was the offensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts, Tom Moore, Terry Bradshaw, his old buddy from Pittsburgh. And I said, what about the interceptions last year with Peyton? Do you still think about him? Does it haunt him? He said, those interceptions are light years ago away. On the other side for the Patriots, the first guys out on the field warming up today were a couple of linebackers. Teddy Bruschi, along with Teddy Johnson, they were out here warming up. Mike Vrabel, those guys say they're going to cover this Indianapolis Colts different than they did even last year and early to start the season. For the weather, it's going to be a factor out here today. It's cold and getting colder. We got some winter weather coming. It should make it all the more fun here in Foxborough. JB? Back to you. Oh, well, for a guy who I know loves South Beach, um, my hat's off to you, Baldy. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right, folks, some other NFL news related to pass along to you. Last night in Miami Beach, former Raider Pro Bowl center Barrett Robbins, who is best known for going AWOL before the Super Bowl a couple years ago, was shot in the torso more than once during a struggle with a police officer. Now, the incident stemmed from a burglary investigation. The latest word is that Robbins is in critical condition. All right, folks, uh, switching gears now. The second half between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles is coming up next. But first, let's take a look at Super Bowl Sunday. Fox's Super Bowl coverage begins with Buck, Aikman, Collinsworth, all access. Then TB, Howie, Jimmy, Troy, and Chris give you their untold stories of the Super Bowl. Then Tony Hawk presents the Boom Boom Hug Jam. Say that fast, TB. Right before boom, a one-hour best darn sports Super Bowl roadshow period. <sighs> then we'll get you ready for kickoff with our own Super Bowl pregame show. It all begins at 10 a.m. Eastern. Second half comes up. Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Get ready for the game. America's Super Bowl party kicks off on Fox. Sports superstars tee off for a million bucks at the 17th hole in Sawgrass. Live performances from the Black Eyed Peas, Kelly Clarkson, and Alicia Keys. All access and behind the scenes. And the guys break down the big game. 
Expect the unexpected. It's the Super Bowl 39 pregame show in HD, February 6th on Fox. Fasten your seatbelt and crank up the defibrillator. Because 24 is back with a vengeance. All units, move in. We make a preemptive strike. We kill our own Secretary of Defense. Over 30 million people got hooked on the most exhilarating thrill ride on TV. This trial is only the beginning. Don't miss your chance to jump on for the bumpy ride. Jack, make this work. 24, an all-new episode on its new night at 9, 8 Central, tomorrow on Fox. Southeast Asia and East Africa have been devastated by tsunamis that claim more than 150,000 lives. But for those who survive, the real struggle has just begun. By donating to the World Food Program and other organizations providing aid, you can make a difference that will save lives and help tsunami victims rebuild. Now is not the time to sit on the sidelines. Millions of people need your support. Join the team and donate. Rust one rust. A good first half for the Philadelphia offense. They even got a very fortuitous bounce. There's Randy Moss on the sideline on what was an attempted fake field goal that did not work for Minnesota. Another break for the Eagles. Perry the fumble. Claiborne was not back in the field of play as he picked it up. So the Vikings didn't get the ball. And then at the end of the half, a break for Minnesota. Philly may have left three points out there. 14 points for Philly at the half. You're watching Fox Sports, broadcasting in HD and presented by Direct TV. We think TV. Now it's finally cold again. When's it going to snow? Our look at the rest of the winter next good day. Introducing the redesigned 2005 Nissan Altima. You might call it an extreme makeover. We call it the 05 Altima. Now with 1500 cash back or lease for 219 per month, Altima's never been more attractive. 1500 cash or lease for 219 per month. Mr. Sophisticated, meet Mr. Adrenaline. the 2005 Lincoln Navigator and Lincoln Aviator. Meet them for less than you'd think. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer now. Travel well. Let me get this straight. I can get up to $100? $100? $100, are you serious? Just for switching banks? Oh, come on, get out of here. $100. For banking the way I always do. That's awesome. <laughs> A hundred dollars. Sounds like easy money to me. That's nice. Where do I sign up? It's winter, and that means bad weather. So get to Toyota's Winter Savings Blast. There you'll find five Toyota SUVs, all with vehicle stability control standard, perfect for icy road conditions. And buying a Toyota SUV is a breeze. Right now, you can get a 4Runner with 0% APR financing or $1,000 cash back, or lease a 4Runner for only $2.69 a month. This winter, hold on to your hat and get to your Toyota dealer for five SUVs moving you forward. He has no idea who you really are, none whatsoever. He couldn't have or else he wouldn't be playing you so close. He thinks he's got it covered, but you know something he doesn't. It's all about to change, because here comes that pass you've been looking for. He can see it in your eyes. Of course, now he'll turn around to look, but it's too late. You're on the highway express lane, and he's on the wrong side of history. The playoffs are where moments are made. What's next? Divisional playoff football here in Philadelphia. A 14-point Eagles lead as we get ready for the start of the second half. 
Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, after talking to Andy Reid, you think the Eagles were down by 20 instead of up by 14. He told me at halftime the things he want to emphasize in the second half is to just stay aggressive, to try to stop them offensively. Minnesota with only 156 yards of total offense in the first half. He says we've also got to be aggressive, stay aggressive on Dante Culpepper. Now for more on the Vikings, let's go over to Chris Meyer. All right, Pam, I talked to Mike Tice on the botched fake field goal. He said an offensive lineman was out on the field that wasn't supposed to be, so when they waved Randy Moss off, he came off because they would have had 12 men on the field. He said he might try it again because it would have worked had they gotten their part right. Also on Donovan McNabb, he said they need to put more pressure. They're too worried about containment. They're going to come at Donovan McNabb. It may be tough. Kenecha Udeze, one of their defensive linemen, has a hip pointer. He's doubtful for the rest of the game. Let's go back up to the booth. All right, Chris, thank you very much. In years past with her team's say we want Donovan McNabb to have to beat us with his arm. Well, he had a very good first half with his arm, picking apart this Minnesota defense because of all the time he had back there. This is Reed, and J.R. Reed gets it out to the 29-yard line. And let's go back to that fake field goal that Chris Myers was talking about. Well, this play was messed up from the very beginning. You can go right down the list. It's 11 guys on the football field right there. So even if Randy Moss had stopped on the sideline, they would have still gotten a penalty on the play. It's just hard to believe in something that is that significant a play that you, I'm sure, has been practiced time after time that you could foul it up that badly. Yeah, you just can't have it. I mean, there's got to be better communication on the sidelines as far as what's going to happen and then getting the proper personnel in the field or in the game. Eagles open up with three wide receivers and Westbrook in the backfield. They hand to Westbrook and he is swallowed up. Immediately, Spencer Johnson. Gain of only one. The halftime statistics. Donovan McNabb throwing for 209 yards. Total yards. You see the first downs right on down the line. And the red zone touchdowns. Only one in the first half for the Vikings. They left some points out there, as did the Eagles at the end of the first half. Yeah, and what's not on there is the third down percentages. And the Eagles converted 80% of their third downs while they, while they held Minnesota to only 38%. McNabb throws in the pass, incomplete. Mitchell caught it on a bounce. Uh-oh. Freddie Mitchell's looking over at Andy Reid saying, challenge that, I caught that. And you just have to wonder how much Andy Reid trusts Freddie Mitchell, who's a little bit enthusiastic with everything oh, he wow. does. Thing bounced a foot before it got to him. And I think you now know why Andy Reid doesn't always trust a receiver in that situation. Andy, That's not even close. Guys, Mitchell's still doing it. He's looking from the huddle over at Andy Reid, saying, throw the challenge flag. He's still doing it. Wasn't even close. Third down and nine, a blitz, the throw incomplete. Lewis, the intended receiver. And it's three and out for the Philadelphia Eagles offense and a good start for the Minnesota defense. Well, exactly what Mike Tice talked about. They wanted to bring pressure. They crossed the linebackers here on the blitz up inside, and they got into Don Donovan's face, which led to the incompletion. I still think that they've got to do a better job pressing these outside receivers. A punt from Johnson. It takes a bounce and two and gets into the arms of Nate Burleson, who has nowhere to go and is just happy to hang on to the ball. Good coverage downfield. Keith Adams, a good special teams player for the Eagles there. 21-7, Philadelphia. More Southwest Airlines flights to more places than ever before. America is your backyard. You are now free to move about the country. You done done me wrong. Done done me wrong. So I'm moving on. Proud to stay too long. Gonna be long gone. For the 28th straight year. Ford was chosen more often than any other brand of truck, setting an all-time sales record. 
Hey, Chubbs, first day? Yeah. No. The answer's always no. You got that Quasimono? Now, I'm a caller. Hi, can I redeem my credit card, Miles? No. That's right. Mix it up. Tic Tac, no. E I E I, no. Marco! Pull no. All right. Are we clear? Yeah. No. Hey, shouldn't they just call Capital One? Hey. Yeah. Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There's no blackout dates on any airline, any time. What's in your wallet? Oh, I got a couple bucks. Bus pass. Not you. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. The Minnesota Vikings have to hope that this will be the start of something big for this offense. Trying to figure out a way to put up some yards on the Philly defense as they fake a reverse. Set up a screen and Bennett is met and dropped by Jeremiah Trotter. Can't say enough about the game that Trotter has had. And what a difference he's made since taking over in the middle at the linebacker spot for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, absolutely right, Joe. And Javon Curse almost had this one. He's going to get his hands up, and Goldberg's going to hit him in the back, or else he might have intercepted that one. Trotter with five tackles in this game to this point, second down and 11. Paul Pepper, Curse, Wayne. Javon Curse, Nate Wayne. And Dante Culpepper goes down, a loss of four. You know, they continue to play this game with Dante Culpepper as far as what they're doing. It looked initially like Dante Culpepper had single coverage on the outside, but the safety then went over the top, and that's why Dante was unable to get the ball out. Of course, when you sit in the pocket and hold the ball, Javon Curse is too good a pass rusher not to get to you. And in that protection scheme, that has to be on Dante Culpepper. You can't expect your back to pick up Curse on the backside. Third down and 15. Culpepper throws, and the pass caught by Moss. Out to the 39, and I was just getting ready to talk about Moss, who Tony Dungy calls the biggest difference maker in the game today, and that is only the second catch all afternoon for Randy Moss. And it's not from a lack of them not wanting to get the ball to him. I mean, they're looking to try to get the ball into his hands, and, you know, this is an offense that is really predicated on making big plays, and Randy Moss certainly provides that, but when you're not getting the big plays and then when you're not converting on third downs, you're going to have a hard time putting points on the board. Big first down for the Minnesota Vikings as they hand to Bennett. And Bennett picks up four. Darwin Walker on the tackle for the Eagles. Well, one of the reasons they're not getting big plays is that typically they're playing back in a fairly cautious two-deep zone. But on first down, they're starting to walk those safeties down a little bit, and they are getting single coverage. Remember in the first half, they threw one up to Marcus Robinson. They really felt like some of their receivers had the advantage in out-jumping these quarterbacks. I'm surprised they haven't come back to it. They haven't taken many shots down the field. There isn't a more aggressive defensive coordinator in the NFC than Jim Johnson. Dante Culpepper hands it to Bennett. Michael Bennett has another Minnesota first down inside Philadelphia territory. Just inside the 49, a gain of seven and a first down. And that's one of the few times for Minnesota that they were able to call the right play based on what Philadelphia was trying to do defensively. That time, Philadelphia's trying to disguise. They wanted it to look like they were going to bring in the extra guy down for the run game. They went out and played coverage, and the Vikings were able to run the ball and, as a result, picked up some pretty good yards. Vikings picking up the tempo here with their first possession of the second half. First down, Minnesota. Culpepper has it knocked out of his hand. They're calling that a live football, and the Philadelphia Eagles end up on top of it, stripping it was McDougal. And now the referee, Pete Morelli, who did not make the call initially, says that his arm was going forward, but that looked like an empty hand. Well, it sure did, and that's the right term, Joe. If the empty hand goes forward, falls out empty hand, that's a fumble. But it doesn't matter because the whistle blew. If he called it incomplete, it's not going to matter. They're going to challenge this play. 
But the official is going to tell Andy Reid, listen, the whistle blew. You cannot challenge it. And yet another break for the Philadelphia Eagles. Andy said, why not? I'm going to throw my flag out there, too. So Andy Reid is getting the explanation along the sideline. The theory being. Philadelphia is not challenging the ruling. The only issue, and Troy, I know you meant to say one of the few breaks right. for the Philadelphia for the Minnesota Vikings against the Philadelphia Eagles is that one goes against Philadelphia. Clearly, the ball was out before the hand was going forward. The only thing if you wanted to challenge is determining field position. But in the end, the Eagles aren't going to get the football, so why waste a challenge? And again, it goes back to the officials not supposed to rule those incomplete, so you can challenge it. Second down and ten, and the pass is incomplete, and the flag comes in. Robinson, the intended receiver, and Sheldon Brown was defending for Philadelphia. Now another, a second flag comes in. Boy, it looks like they're going to get a hole. 24 in the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. And I have to tell you, on first glance, I didn't see that one. I thought, if anything, it looked like Robinson was initiating the contact and came off late. So with Sheldon Brown, it's the automatic first down. The ball is placed at the 43. Blitz coming from the Eagles. Culpepper is going to step up and run. Dante Culpepper wrapped up at the 35 by Dehani Jones, a gain of eight. And again, Culpepper thought he saw something. The, the Eagles were looking again to bring the blitz, have one-on-one -on -one outside with Randy Moss. You saw Culpepper give him the signal, much like what he did last week when they threw the touchdown to Randy Moss. That's where he's signaling out to let the receiver know what it is that he wants. Instead, Michael Lewis goes back out over the top to cover, and that's why Dante Culpepper turned it into a quarterback draw. And an eight-yard gain at second down and two. Culpepper hands to Bennett, and Michael Bennett has another Minnesota first down. And Jeremiah Trotter has just been relentless today. I think at some point, you have to try and throw the ball over his head. He is playing downhill so hard. Every time they get in a cover two defense with those safety split, Trotter is going to bite on everything in the running game. And the last time they tried it, when the fumble happened, Jermaine Wiggins was wide open down the field. You can't just let him live in your backfield. You have to try and do something to offset that. I tell you, I don't think they expect him to go down the middle, though, Chris, in that cover two. I think they look for Dehani Jones to run with that middle guy. Trotter's coming again. The Vikings pick him up. Culpepper has time and floats it for Bennett, who cannot make the catch. So incomplete. I'll bring up second down and 10. Well, that time it was Keith Adams who was down the middle trying to cover Jermaine Wiggins. Wiggins has been a big threat for this offense. And I just think once you start, especially on early downs, before they get the nickel and the diamond there, Give him a little bit of a chance to work the middle of the field against these linebackers. Keith Adams is not really known as a cover linebacker, and they haven't given him much opportunity in the middle. This is the 10th play of the drive. Drive the Vikings needed. Down 14, but they've got to finish it. Culpepper slipped as he threw it. Still completes it to Robinson. Third down coming up. As Robinson got five yards. Javon Kurse was the one downfield making the tackle after the completion of Marcus Robinson. And every third down becomes so big in a game like this in order to keep the ball, keep drives going, and then potentially being able to go all the way down and get a touchdown. And when you're down 21-7 and you've seen the way that the Eagles are able to move the football, this becomes very important. And According I think to Mike Tice, Chris, right now they are not in Morton Anderson field goal range just maybe two down territory to try to get the first down it's third and five Paul Pepper has it batted up in the air and picked off that's Reese and the Minnesota Vikings who have gone three games without a turnover 
turn it over and the interception for Reese. They stunt right into an interception. What a play by Ike Reese. You done done me wrong. Done done me wrong. So I'm moving on. Probably stay too long. Gonna be long gone. For the 28th straight year. Ford was chosen more often than any other brand of truck, setting an all-time sales record. Joe, we've seen you handle some pretty sticky broadcast situations. That's why you're a natural for this. No, I don't know. Be -be 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 Joey, think about this. A Joe Buck talk show called I'm Listening. Guts, glory, blood, sweat. All Buck, no ball. I'm twice as big as the quarterback. Shouldn't I get paid twice as much? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Say cheese, Timmy. Lays. Get your Say cheese. smile on. Say cheese, Timmy. <laughs> get your smile on. Please say cheese. Introducing new Lay's Cheddar and Sour Cream Potato Chips, made with real cheddar cheese. Work it, Timmy. Yeah. Whoa, new Lay's smile. Cheddar and Sour Cream. Lay's, get your smile on. Eleven NFL athletes living in one house. Backyard football has never looked so good. Or maybe it's just the apparel. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by the next Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. The first turnover of the game. A fantastic athletic play by Mike Reese. Got his hands up. Knocked it up into the air. Came down with the interception. And Donovan McNabb guns it out to Mitchell for a Philadelphia first down. And we go back to the interception thrown by Culpepper. Here's Reese here, but here's Javon Curson. They're paying a lot of attention to him, but watch Ike Reese come right this way and actually get blocked on the play, but have the presence of mind to get his hands up, tip it in the air, and make the play. Just a tremendous athletic play that time by Ike Reese. First interception thrown by Culpepper in his last 132 attempts. As Westbrook gets it. Crosses the 45 out to the 46, game three. First one there was Williams. You know, when you talk about the Philadelphia Eagles offensively and how much Andy Reid likes to throw the football, and, you know, clearly that's what they base this offense on is the ability to spread it around. And actually the Eagles were the, they ran the ball the second fewest times in the National Football League, only averaging 23 rushing attempts per game, but yet they were eighth in the National Football League as far as yards per carry average at 4.4. And so they're effective with the run when they use it. On second down and seven, McNabb in trouble. Gets away from Thomas and is forced out by Antoine Winfield. Ended up with no gain, maybe got half a yard on the play. But McNabb is having so much fun and has a smile on his face. And probably the biggest reason is they really are getting no pressure on him. Even on that one, he just ran because he saw a lane to try and take off and run through. But the four-man rush of the Minnesota Vikings really has not gotten there all day. You, know, you talk to Donovan McNabb and you say, are you going to look to run the ball more now that Terrell Owens is not playing? And, you know, I knew the answer to that before I even asked. He wants to throw the football, and he's never been a guy who looks to run. He always is scrambling around looking to throw the ball first. And that's not changed. Timeout, Philadelphia. Donovan McNabb is having a ball. Leading by 14 points. Imagine how good it would feel to pay off your high-interest credit cards. And that's just one of the great things refinancing with AmeriQuest can help you do. I knew that I wouldn't. Your own personal AmeriQuest loan specialist can help you lower your monthly payments. We'll even do the paperwork. So good. Call 1-800-AmeriQuest now or go to AmeriQuest.com. AmeriQuest, the company that knows you are more.
Wait, where are we supposed to put the video conference room? There's no walls. What's this? Your video conference room. We need a desk. Simplicity, powered by Cisco. Fuel economy like a car. Cargo room and versatility like an SUV. The totally new Ford Freestyle. One vehicle, endless possibilities. Ford, built for the road ahead. Once a year, we get to experience the thrill of a lifetime. And once a year, we get to turn an unknown. You are the sexiest voice ever. Into a superstar. You think you've seen the best? You haven't seen anything yet. American Idol premieres at 8, 7 central, Tuesday on Fox. Chilly, windy day here in Philadelphia with the Eagles gunning for their fourth consecutive appearance in the NFC Championship game. Their third straight here at home. Well, the Vikings are trying to become the first sixth seed to make it to the championship final. As McNabb throws it short. He had John Stone at his feet with Trey Thomas trying to keep John Stone away. And that'll bring up fourth down. And we look at Wilma McNabb, Donovan's mom. She's become quite a celebrity herself in some of those soup commercials. That the champions had on. Maybe she knows something we don't know. <laughs> Six and a half minutes left in this third quarter. Dirk Johnson punts it. And it checks up just inside the 20 and bounces back out. To the 23. 31 yard punt. Michael downfield to down it. Dante back to work down 14. Cold hard facts. As the Super Bowl approaches, millions of bottles of refreshing frost brewed Coors Light will be tackled. Fans will get in touch with their inner linebacker. Grown men will dance. Games will be won. Voices will be lost. And tons of lucky hot dogs will be washed down by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. The coldest tasting beer in the world. And the official beer sponsor of Super Bowl 39. You done done me wrong. You done done me wrong. So I'm moving on. Probably stay too long. Gonna be long gone. For the 28th straight year, Ford was chosen more often than any other brand of truck, setting an all-time sales record. I have a new friend. He told me to call him Charlie. It's not unusual for a child to create imaginary friends. Charlie doesn't exist. I'm gonna make him mad. Why would you do this? It was Charlie. Did Daddy tell you about my mommy? Let's hope you don't wind up like her. Robert De Niro, Dakota Fanning. Do you like games? I love games. Would you like to play one? I'm already playing. Who did this? Hide and seek. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Rated R, January 28th. The NFC Divisional Playoffs are brought to you by Coors Light, the coldest tasting beer in the world, Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL and Super Bowl 39. By Cisco Systems, this is the power of the network now. By Hide and Seek, starring Robert De Niro and Dakota Fanning, January 28th only in theaters. And by AmeriQuest Mortgage, the company that knows you are more. Well, the Vikings had a pretty good drive going until the Ike Reese play and the interception. So far in this game, Jermaine Wiggins, who was the leading receiver for the Vikings this year, has been shut out as they play action on first down. And Culpepper's in trouble, and down he goes. Jeremiah Trotter was first. Javon Kirsch was there to help. The bootlegs really tore up this defense the last time. They had great success, and now Jeremiah Trotter is simply running through and creating nightmares. And Dante Culpepper was trying to get the ball to Nate Burleson. Good coverage there by Sheldon Brown. And 
I mean, Jeremiah Trotter, what a day he is having. He comes on the blitz. Nobody picks him up. He's able to bring Dante down to the ground, which so few guys can do by themselves. Second down and 22. Second Eagles sack. Paul Pepper trying to set up a screen, and there was nothing there. Uh, you get into a game like this with these Eagles, with the Eagle defense, and, and it becomes a feeding frenzy. You can sense it right now with what's happening. And they're in passing mode, and that's what Jim Johnson and this defense wants out of those offensive teams. And it's not a good position to be in. There's still plenty of time on the clock. Clearly, they're backed up. I think they've got to be very, very careful here in what they call. You want to try to get a few yards, but more than anything, just punt it. A lot of blitzing, a lot of successful blitzing for Jim Johnson's defense. Third and 22. Paul Pepper flushed out again. Trying to buy time. Up. Throws and completes it. A first down for Robinson. Paul Pepper bought enough time and then fired a rocket out to Robinson for a 28-yard game. And what did Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, tell us last night? At least once per game, he makes something great out of an absolute disaster. By buying that amount of time, scrambling to the outside, he allowed Marcus Robinson enough time to work down the field, and then he comes back to the football, and this was just a bullet by Dante Culpepper. It was amazing how quickly that ball got there. He had about a tenth of a second more before Burgess was going to take care of Culpepper. Ontario Smith, after that huge first down, carries it for five yards over the left side. What a big play that was for the Vikings. Fox tomorrow, the nonstop season of 24 continues on its regular night and time. It's a new heart-stopping episode of 24 tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, right here on Fox. Second down and five here for the Vikings. Down by 14. Quarter dominated by the Vikings with regard to yardage, but no scoring. The pass from Moss off his hands. Trotter was out there along with Lito Shepard. There's only about five or six plays per game where Randy Moss gets single man coverage on the outside. And when you get it, you have to take advantage of it right in his hands, and he dropped it. Right now, another critical third down. The Vikings, who struggled on third down in the first half, have done a much better job here in the second half. Three drops this half for the Vikings. The latest by Moss, third down and five. Paul Pepper to his outlet valve Moore, and the welding Moore has a first down. Inside the 45, out of bounds, just shy of the Philadelphia 41, a gain of 12. And what a good job by Dante Culpepper, just taking what was there by the defense. And instead of feeling like he had to throw the ball to where the first down markers were, he sees that there's nothing down the field. He comes to the swing route to Moeldy Moore and lets him run for the first down. Good job. And that's we've seen a lot of that this year by Dante Culpepper making good decisions and that's why he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. Culpepper over the middle another interception it's Trotter right into his gut. Culpepper makes the tackle after Trotter gets the interception. And I can't even believe that that was the intended target. Jermaine Wiggins who we've been talking about who would have the ability to work the middle of the field was wide open for a huge play and Dante didn't even look at him. They go play action on first down and Wiggins is going to get in behind the linebackers. There's nobody around him. And Dante Culpepper just focused in on one receiver and Trotter read it beautifully. Yeah, he predetermined when he went back where he was going to throw that football and never saw Jermaine Wiggins going down the middle. As soon as you say that Dante Culpepper makes good decisions, he throws it right into the arms of Jeremiah Trotter. Trotter returned it for 35 yards, has seven tackles, the interception and half a sack today. And he has been disruptive. McNabb, Mitchell, stays on his feet, touchdown! Wow. by Fred 
Joni Mitchell, the people's champ. Tell you, Freddie Mitchell having a big day today. Only twice all season has he had a game where he's had more than two receptions, but he's showing up big in this one. And you take a look, Donovan sees it the entire way. Pinkston drew so much coverage that Freddie Mitchell was able to get in behind it. Well, and I still close. don't understand why they're not pressing these receivers on the outside. Well, I'm not they sure he ever got across that line. And the challenge flag is on the field from the Minnesota sideline as we get a closer look at Minnesota has challenged the ruling on the field. From the ball through the end zone prior to scoring. Which and would be that, a touchback. Exactly. If this ball comes out and then he's out of bounds or the ball goes out of bounds, that well, ball is clearly out. out. No question about it. Hits the pylon. That is going to be the Minnesota Vikings ball. In a 14 point game, the Vikings should get it back thanks to this challenge. between form and function just became razor thin. The Motorola Razor, only from the new Singular. The new Singular, raising the bar. What's that? Oh, it's a duvet cover. A what? A duvet cover. It's a decorative sham that also protects. <clears throat> Watch the game. The double quarter pound with cheese. Pound one. Oh! Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. Wa -wa -wa. It's a throw pillow. <laughs> Ready to make the move to Levitra for a strong, lasting experience? Ask your doctor if Levitra's right for you. Levitra is what many men with ED count on for a strong, lasting erection. For that quality sexual experience. Strong and lasting. When he wants it, it's what Levitra's all about. Levitra is only for men healthy enough for sexual activity. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains or alpha blockers for prostate problems or high blood pressure, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. In the rare case an erection lasts for more than four hours, seek immediate medical attention. Strong, lasting, experience Levitra for yourself. If you're on another ED treatment, maybe it's time to try Levitra. Ask your doctor about a free sample. Freddie Mitchell, who is trying to earn his self-given nicknames with his effort today, he has been sensational for the Philadelphia Eagles, wondering whether this will be Minnesota's ball at their own 20 or a touchdown for Philadelphia. The pylon is considered out of bounds in the end zone, and you can see the hit by Russell seems to have knocked the ball out of the grasp of Freddie Mitchell before he crossed the plane of the goal line. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question. The ball clearly out before Freddie Mitchell was on the ground. And looking at the, f the face of Freddie Mitchell, I think he knows it as well. Yeah, I'm sure that Andy Reid's gotten plenty of replay looks. And to give you some idea of how sure they are, the Eagles are, I don't think they've replayed that thing once here in the stadium. They don't want the officials to get any added looks. The field judge was right there, ruled it a touchdown. When you watch it live, you can see how that mistake could be made is Pete Morelli will give us the call. After reviewing the play, the receiver fumbled the ball prior to going over the goal line. It will be a touchback awarded to Minnesota. Minnesota will not be charged a timeout. They got the call right. Minnesota will take over at their own 20, and it stays a 14-point game. Yeah, and you think about the opportunities that the Philadelphia Eagles have had, you know, right before the half there, losing the chance to get the field goal, and, and then there not coming away with, with seven points. I mean, that's ten points that they've given up. It should have been very easy to have gotten. Just yeah. so you know, defensively, it's Chuck Knox Jr. who handles the replay decisions from up above in the booth for Mike Tice. He was the one that alerted the sideline to throw the challenge flag. And it's still a 14-point game, and the Vikings have it. Still plenty of time. 
Just under four minutes to go, third quarter. Culpepper with time over the middle. There is Wiggins' first catch. And he's got a first down out to the Minnesota 40. You know, Joe, I've got to tell you, that's at least the fourth time in this game I have seen him that wide open to catch a pass, and they simply haven't been able to get it to him. These linebackers are wanting to play so close to the line of scrimmage and attack forward, there are opportunities to get those throws in. They need to stay with this. Well, I guarantee you, Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, got with Dante Culpepper on the sidelines, and that was something that they discussed. The ninth different Viking receiver to catch a pass today is Jermaine Wiggins. Screenplay for Burleson, and Nate Burleson has room to run. Burleson still going inside the 35. Missed tackles by the Eagles. And a 28-yard catch and run by Burleson. And watch the job that Marcus Robinson does on the outside as far as blocking and allowing Burleson to get inside of that. Here's Marcus Robinson going against Lito Shepard. He slow plays him off the ball and then immediately engages him on the block. And by driving him out of bounds, that's what allowed Burleson the extra room. You ever been to a horror movie and the freak has you and then you get away from the freak? Well, that was Nate Burleson that time. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The that's freak's good. offside yeah, that time. The was a little too much. And on the free play, it's Burleson. A nice move to the inside. He's got a first down at the 19. There's a flag on the play, but clearly, Curse came across too early, and the play will stand. I mean, this is really amazing. Outside, number 93 in the defense. Penalty is applied. First down. To watch the ebb and flow of this game, you feel like it's so one-sided that Philadelphia has just been dominating the football game, and yet if the Vikings can go in here and score a touchdown, it's brand new. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles have had every opportunity to really give the Vikings the knockout punch. They haven't been able to do it. And to the Vikings' credit, they keep coming back. They won't go away. Another throw from Culpepper. End zone Moss, and he's overthrown. And Moss got plenty of attention from Lewis and Shepard. Yep. You wonder, Chris if the Philadelphia Eagles, how much the Eagles will regret the way they handled the end of the first half when they literally just left three points in. You know, Troy's been talking about it all day. There really have been such tremendous opportunities. And for Dante Culpepper, I think sometimes when he gets in a big situation around the goal line, he tries to force it in to Randy Moss. There was really nowhere to go with that one. Second down and 10. Weldy Moore on the draw and Moore got back to the line of scrimmage that is it Hollis Thomas Sam Rayburn for the Eagles and the bullet yeah. Keith Adams coming up there the special teams maven and they say he only has one speed he doesn't always hit you when he's running at you because he goes so hard but if he does it's going to be ugly Keith Adams is dead. Julius, who played for a long time for New England, is here watching his son today. He got the start because of the injury to Simino. Third and ten. Blitz. Culpepper lost the football, able to get back on top of it. But the ball is all the way back outside the 30, and they are outside field goal range now for Morton Anderson, so the question is, do you run Jose Cortez out to try to kick the field goal? And Brian Dawkins comes on the blitz. They bring Backer as well. That's four weak, and you just cannot pick that up. Dante Culpepper never sees it, and this is where, at times, his ability to scramble will hurt his football team because rather than get rid of it, he tries to outrun it, and he loses a lot of yards and now potentially out of field goal range. And Dante has to understand the protections. When they're in that protection, he has either got to drop back, throw it, get rid of it. You can't hold the ball. Minnesota calls a timeout, and they have plenty to discuss on the sideline. We look back. Mitchell got the first touchdown. Then it was Brian Westbrook. He was busy in the first half. Dante Culpepper ran it in from seven yards out. And then this freak play for the Eagles out of the arms of L.J. Smith, into the arms of Freddie Mitchell, and most recently, Mitchell, after originally being granted a touchdown, it was ruled a fumble off the pylon, which is out of bounds in the end zone, and a touchback. 
Now it's fourth and 22. The ball, Troy, is at the 31. You've got three options. You can try to kick the field goal. You could potentially punt, which doesn't make much sense. Or you can go for it, and on fourth and 22, they're going to go for it. I don't like this decision at all. I mean, I think that you kick a field goal, if you happen to get another field goal, and then a two-point conversion on a touchdown, you'd be right there at 21. If they were to kick a field goal from this point on the field, it would be Jose Cortez and not Morton Anderson. On fourth and 22. Culpepper. Moss. Incomplete, and the Eagles take over. There was nowhere to go as Randy Moss was covered brilliantly by Hood and Michael Lewis. Yeah, they had two guys back there on Moss defending him, and I thought inside on Burleson, number 81, that maybe that would have been the best opportunity for Dante. If he works back there, he's one-on-one -on, -one on a linebacker, but Dante had determined, I'm going to go up to the best receiver I've got, try to throw it up high and give him a shot. We talked earlier about the missed opportunities by the Philadelphia Eagles that they've had in order to put the Vikings away. How about the Vikings? I mean, they go down there, they fail to execute the, the fake field goal where they could have come away with some points, and then obviously the big sack, which knocks them out of field goal range just two plays earlier. Well, twice now on that drive, he threw passes to Randy Moss <laughs> when there was no possibility of getting that into him. So first down for the Eagles as they take over. Turnover on downs. And Freddie Mitchell continues his fine day with a first down catch. Good for 11 yards. You know what's interesting? Out of all these receivers, the guy that kept playing all the way through those two meaningless games was Freddie Mitchell. And I thought maybe he might be a little bit sharper than the other guys coming out here. And But for the fumble, he has been. So in other words, you called this. In my mind. In your now, mind. Yeah, I now did. he did. Good. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember, uh, in my mind, I said it would be 21 to 7 Philly <laughs> after three, which is the score as this Fox NFL special will continue after a word from your local Fox station. I hate you. <laughs> All right. We're even for the day. 21 7 after three in Philadelphia. Watching the NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox. A controversial website targets high school cheerleaders. Parents speak out tonight at 10. Chevy Malibu LT versus Toyota Camry XL EV6. Malibu has factory installed remote vehicle start. Camry doesn't. Malibu has a flat fold front passenger seat. Not Camry. Malibu even has better fuel economy. Proof once again that all cars are not created equal. And even with all this, the 2005 Chevy Malibu LT is still over $1,200 less than Camry XL EV6. Chevy Malibu, an American revolution. See your local Chevy dealer. Looking good, fellas. Looking good. When you gotta have a hoagie, you gotta have a Wawa. When I first heard about free on-demand from Comcast Digital Cable, I was suspicious. This on-demand feature, it's free? Yeah, there's tons of free stuff to watch whenever you want. And satellite doesn't have it? No. Huh. You pass. But now we're watching on demand more than regular TV. I get sports like free NFL replay. There's lots of free stuff for the kids. <laughs> Who left this on? I'm thrilled with Comcast. Suspicious about other things. That was then. This is Comcast. Right now, when you get Comcast cable, you can add Digital Plus with Showtime for just a dollar more. Every time in this second half that it's looked like the Minnesota Vikings were going to climb right back into the game. A mistake has been made. The big sack by Brian Dawkins set up the fourth and 22. And it's still 21 to 7. 15 minutes left in this divisional playoff game. Back to Westbrook. And Brian is out to the 46. 
Well, the question was, how would the Eagles wide receiving core answer the call without Terrell Owens in this first playoff game? And from Lewis to Pinkston to Mitchell, it's been pretty good. Yeah, it has. I mean, they've done a good job. They've elevated their play. A lot of question marks coming into this game. I'm still surprised, however, and I've said it already, but that the Minnesota Vikings have not come out and really challenged these guys because over the years, these receivers have had problems with defenders in their face. They've allowed clean releases off the ball all day. It's second down and seven. McNabb going for it all down the field. Incomplete. And a flag comes out. Pinkston, the intended receiver. And you look out here at Todd Pinkston again. Look at the cushion that he's given by Ralph Brown. And so by doing that, you allow Pinkston to do what he does best, and that's run vertical, not to mention that Ralph Brown is all over. Automatic first down. And that penalty on Ralph Brown takes the ball all the way down to the eight. That was pretty close on the pass interference. I thought for a minute they were going to let that one go. A 46-yard penalty on Ralph Brown. First and goal from the eight. McNabb, too high, and it's nearly picked off by Russell. A golden opportunity for another big momentum change in this game, and Russell just couldn't haul it in. And another out and then in move by Brian Westbrook. He's going to go out. Claiborne's going to go with him, and McNabb just sails it over his head. He had to miss that one by about six feet. Well, and Brian Russell, who had his best game of the year last week in their win over Green Bay, drops yet another interception for this defensive team, something they've struggled with all season long. He had an interception last week. He had only one during the regular season. McNabb looked like he was going to run it from the start. And he gets leveled. Ontarius Thomas with a big hit, a gain of five, bring up third down and goal. And Joe, you brought up a great point because last season, the two safeties, Corey Chavis and Brian Russell between them, had 17 interceptions on the year. And this game, and this season, I should say, they had one each. And so you're talking about a reason why this defense fell off this season the way they did. They just didn't make the plays they made a year ago. That, by the way, Chris, was the first rush of the day for Donovan McNabb. Brings up third down and goal. Westbrook is covered, and throwing it away is Donovan McNabb. Fourth down. And a good play there by Donovan McNabb. Wanting to try to get the touchdown, but recognizing that it wasn't there and doing the smart thing and just throwing that ball away. I think they were trying to hit that shovel pass one more time, and for the second time that since they've tried it in this ball game, it just simply wasn't there. It was taken away. He's going to come out, and I believe going to try the shovel pass back underneath to L.J. Smith and Kenny Mixon for the second time in the ball game. Boards it. And he had Westbrook, who was covered up by Antoine Winfield, to lead this 21-yard field goal try by Akers, and he is good as he drills it. 24 to 7 as the Eagles add to their lead. If you can't remember which full-size truck has the best-in-class interior space, best-in-class power, and the best-in-class 4x4 towing capacity, remember the Titan. And don't forget, $1,000 cash back or 2% financing at your Nissan dealer now. The full-size Nissan Titan. Unforgettable. She had her license for 45 minutes. <laughs> and two accidents in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> two. I'm State Farm Agent Kevin Weber, and this is a true story. Yeah, I was scared. I didn't want to call my parents. I called her parents. He really treated her like she was his own daughter. I handled her claim and gave her a few pointers. A lot of pointers. <laughs> a lot of pointers. Any insurance company can promise you a good price, but nobody takes care of you like State Farm. We'd love to prove it to you. Call an agent today like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. I want to taste my beer, but I can't. 
Every year, thousands suffer from taste loss. Look for the clues. Does your buddy smack his lips incessantly? Does your boyfriend act fidgety? Or do emotional outbursts come at inopportune times? Why are you doing this to me? Get the facts at PreventTasteLoss.com and protect yourself with great tasting Miller Lite with more taste than Bud Light and half the carbs. I've held it inside for so long. Miller, good call. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By Subway, can you feel the heat rising? Get ready to experience a fresh toasted sub. Subway heat fresh. By State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Best Buy, thousands of possibilities get yours. Seventeen points. That's the lead now for Philadelphia. Two interceptions. Jeremiah Trotter, Ike Reese. Those footballs will be tucked away and kept. From inside the end zone, Ontario Smith takes a knee. And you look back, there have been some missed opportunities for Minnesota today. This was just a bad break. From Smith to Freddie Mitchell, then on that attempt on a fake field goal. A turnover on downs then this was nearly a turnover but Philly kept it because Claiborne didn't reestablish himself in bounds and the latest which would have saved three points was the near interception by Brian Russell. Well so far the Minnesota Vikings offense has been taking a whipping from this Eagles defense they need to start playing like they're capable of doing and now you're going to get an illegal substitution to start this one. Illegal substitution. 12 men in the huddle. Five yard penalty, first down. Ontario Smith went darting off the field and will go down to Chris Myers. Yeah, Joe, at the start of the game, we knew that Randy Moss wasn't 100%. Mike Tice was concerned that his ankle would worsen under the cold conditions as the game wore on, that he might have to miss some series to take a break. But so far, the trainer said his ankle is holding up fine. He's been solemn and silent, but after the last series, looked up at the clock at Randy Moss and said, we can do this, clapped his hands and ran out on the field. Only two catches today for Moss. First and 15. Culpepper with time, airs it out, Kelly Campbell, and it's tipped away by Lido Shepard, the Pro Bowl cornerback. And I tell you what, how about the job that this Eagles defense really has done all day long? I mean, coming into the game, there was talk about how the offense was going to respond without Terrell Owens, but yet defensively, the way that they have played all day is really outstanding. It's not surprising because it's basically the way they've played all year long, they've already held Dante under 200 yards passing, less than 300 yards here, and halfway through the fourth quarter. And Jim Johnson and his staff have done a remarkable job getting this team ready to play today. Second down and 15. Paul Pepper, screen pass, incomplete for Ontario Smith. Lito Shepard again. Lito Shepard's had a tremendous year this season. You just saw him break up the pass on the previous play, and this one he comes off the corner on the blitz. And when these corners are coming, they are coming hard. Remember uh, Jim Johnson telling us last night that the first game with the Minnesota Vikings was the first time that he was truly convinced that these two young cornerbacks, Lito Shepard and Sheldon Brown, could get the job done and he could come with his full package and he has ever since. Five tackles today, four passes defended. For Lito Shepard, it's third and 15. Paul Pepper with time over the middle. The pass is caught by Robinson. He is short of first down yardage. That'll bring up fourth down. And we got Randy Moss in the slot and the ankle obviously is bothering him. Otherwise, he's got to be coming off the ball faster than this to try to clear some people out. And by him not running any faster than what he is, he keeps a defensive secondary closing in on those intermediate routes. And boy, Randy, he obviously is being hindered by that ankle. Two yards shy of the first down was Robinson. With under 13 minutes to play, Philadelphia is going to get it back. High-hanging punt by Bennett, and it's Dexter Wynn on the return. Wynn out to the 40. 36-yard punt, four-yard return. 
Donovan McNabb and the Eagles offense will head back to the field. Every Subway sandwich is made fresh right in front of you. So you choose all the ingredients, the meat, the veggies, the fresh baked bread. No wonder so many people are coming over to the great taste of Subway subs. Because when you really think about it, they don't make the sandwiches, you do. Subway, eat fresh. Fresh toasted subs by Subway Restaurants present the Super Bowl 39 Post-A-Toast Contest. Do you love the Super Bowl? Log on and post a toast that proves your passion for the game. The top two toasts will win an all-expenses-paid trip for two to Super Bowl 39. The newly designed Nissan Altima. Engaging. A shift in style. From fit to finish. It's forward thinking. Introducing the beautifully redesigned 2005 Nissan Altima. Now with 1500 cash back or 1% financing. 1500 cash or 1% APR. Enlightening. See your Nissan dealer now. You know what's insane? You can control the Black Eyed Peas with the push of a button. They have been trained to hunt it. Now, this is just the beginning. They just have to survive it. Alone in the dark. Rated R in theaters January 28th. Heart and soul of that defense, Brian Dawkins taking a seat, and a guy who has played a brilliant game and been so good down the stretch, Jeremiah Trotter, taking a break while the Eagles' offense takes over at their own 40. Fourth down and two, the Minnesota Vikings and Mike Tice elected to punt it away. Their defense can make a stop. Hand off is to Levins. Hit the hole hard, and he was wrapped up by Spencer Johnson and Dontarius Thomas. Go back to that class of 99. Donovan McNabb, Dante Culpepper. Look at the numbers that have followed, including the Pro Bowls. You also think about the guys who didn't make it out of that group. Tim Couch and Achilles Smith and Cade McNown all drafted in, what, about the top 15 or so. And those two guys, well, it looks easy now, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, how could you not have taken one of those two? It was Tim Couch taking number one overall. Nice play by Kevin Williams, who just throws down Brian Westbrook. It was Couch the McNabb second, Achilles Smith third overall, then Culpepper 11th, and Cade McNown 12th. And uh, the other three guys are right now nowhere to be found as Dawkins is going to head off the field for a while third down and seven and I agree with you Chris I, you know you expect those guys when they're drafted that high to go out and have great careers maybe not to the extent that Donovan McNabb and Dante Culpepper have but boy, more perplexing that those other players are not even in football right now third down and seven McNabb over the middle and the pass is complete to LJ Smith Dontarius Thomas was late getting to him, a gain of 13 and a big first down for Philadelphia. The story of this game, Joe, is the pass protection. There's just no doubt in my mind they're going to come with a blitz again here off the corner, try and do some stunts, some looping, and watch the way these guys are picking this up. You cannot give a guy like Donovan McNabb that kind of time, and even Kevin Williams, who is one of the best pass rushing defensive tackles in the game, Jermaine Mayberry has just done a great job on him today. On first down, it's Westbrook. Look at that action, bouncing it outside. Westbrook ducks down with a first down. So quick, not a big guy, more powerful than you might think. And he picked up 12. American Idol, don't forget, to our season premiere on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. American Idol starts right here on Fox. Under 10 to play, first down Philadelphia. And off to Levins. Go 
Morrissey Levins down inside the 30. Gain of four. Troy, I think we have to go back and at least discuss the decision by Mike Tice to punt the ball and not go for it on that fourth and two. I don't know that there was a right decision or not, but certainly with the way that Philadelphia's offense has been going up and down the field, you had to wonder how many more opportunities his offense was going to get. Well, if you're in that position, yeah, you're basically saying that if we don't make the fourth down, then you're pretty much conceding the game to the Eagles. Still, obviously, there's 12 and a half minutes left in the game when they decided to punt, but at some point, your defense has got to be able to step up and make a play. Second down and seven, they hand a Westbrook on a reverse. And Westbrook has a first down at the 14-yard line. They lost Waldo again. You know, it really is somewhat mind-boggling considering the fact that they came into this game and their sole objective was to shut down Brian Westbrook. Yet he's been a major player in this. You take a look at Lance Johnstone. He's the rush defensive end. He's got contained. And I don't know what he's looking at. I mean, you've got to get up the field and play your responsibilities. <laughs> And that's been the case with this defense all day long. You know, it was hilarious as McNabb, who is a great basketball player and loves the game, did a no-look handoff. <laughs> I don't know if he fooled anybody or not, but it looked cool. Great clock down to one. They get it away. McNabb forced to leave the pocket. And throws it away. Freddie Mitchell the closest to it. Freddie Mitchell begs better than any receiver I've seen this season. He was in the end zone doing jumping jacks, trying to get McNabb's attention. And McNabb saw him the whole way. It wasn't like he didn't see him. You're going to see Freddie jumping right in there. He's going to come back, start waving. Now both hands jumping up and down. Please, please, please. And since then, I see there's coverage all over you. I'm throwing that thing out of bounds. Uh, yo, yeah, I, mean, I can tell you, there's nothing a quarterback hates more than when you got a guy running down, running down the field waving his arms. Second down and 10. Now, fires, completes it. L.J. Smith short of the first down. He got nine. Let's check in with Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, Brian Dawkins knew something was wrong instantly when he hobbled off the field. Uh, but the trainers worked on Dawkins for a while before determining he was just cramping. He has gone into the locker room for some IV treatment. As you know, he had the flu earlier this week. Back to you. All right, Pam, thanks. So that's why we saw Dawkins leaving the playing field. It's third down and one here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Dorsey Levens gets it. And Dorsey Levens did not get the first down. No gain on the play. And Chris Claiborne, who played so well last weekend in Green Bay, made the stop for the Vikings. Claiborne's just going to run right through the hole and do it. He looked a little bit like Jeremiah Trotter in the way that he's been playing all day, and Hollis Thomas didn't like that one. <laughs> Under seven to play, and Akers, who is one for one, to try a 23-yarder. Good snap, good hold, good kick. It's a 20-point game, 27 to seven. Six and a half to go. Let's hope Rusty didn't get into your stuff. No, I'm sure he's fine. I mean, he's wearing a shot collar. Hey, man, hope you don't mind we dip in your Bud Light. Battery was dead. Fresh, smooth, real, Bud Light. You're dancing. It's good. It's all here. When you're a star like me, you just get treated differently. Key to the mini bar? Ooh. They miniaturize an entire bar just for me. Turn down service. Fantastic. Somehow they know I'd like to sleep between the sheets. Even my independent insurance agent spoils me. John, for you, the best policy is drive insurance from Progressive. I've compared a lot of them. You see, he treats me like the Sultan of Papa Mau Mau. Actually, I do it for everyone. Of course you do. Everyone gets taken care of with drive insurance from Progressive. My oldest friend. <laughs> my East. My West Side. My private.
suicide. My heartbreak. My heartbeat. My life happens here. My card is American Express. Trading Spouses Meet Your New Mommy is all new with a switch that's got a neat freak freaking out. No, don't put it on me! All new at 8, 7 central tomorrow on Fox. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. The Philadelphia Eagles have themselves pointed right back toward the NFC Championship. They've lost three of those in a row at St. Louis at home to Tampa Bay and then last year here to the Carolina Panthers. Akers kicks it away. And he got into that one. Moore will take a knee. We'll take a break. 6.39 remaining. And a 20-point lead for the Eagles. Today's great companies are adapting to change using highly scalable HP Blade System servers powered by reliable Intel Xeon processors. Fox Tuesday, American Idol is back. Bigger, over 100,000 auditions. Better. You can't make your heart feel something that it was. Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> and better. Sweet music everywhere. I don't like music anymore. Don't miss a note. It's a rainy man. Hallelujah, it's rainy man. When TV's number one series returns. Are you ready, America? American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Premieres at 8, 7 Central, Tuesday on Fox. February 6th here, the stories of past glory that have never been heard before and the untold stories of the Super Bowl. Our own Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Jimmy Johnson, Troy Aikman, Chris Collinsworth reveal their untold stories as well as count down the top 10 Super Bowl moments as voted on by you, the fans. To vote for your favorite moment, go to foxsports.com on MSN. Keyword, top 10. First down, Dante Culpepper, Ontario Smith. There was nowhere to go. Smith lost a couple. You know, Joe, I go back to something you said at the beginning of this game, and that was there are some people you just can't give extra time to game plan and not have it have an impact on the game. And Jim Johnson has definitely devised the scheme and Andy Reid for this one that has just been special. I mean, this is a tremendous Minnesota Vikings offense, and they've had no answers today. Second down and 12. Paul Pepper, Ontario Smith out of the backfield, makes a little move, and he's a yard shy of a first down. Well, that's why I go back, and you, and you think back over the last couple of weeks and all the critics that were going after Andy Reid and his decision to rest players and they should be playing and you're not going to have momentum. How are they going to come out and respond? I think they've respond very, very well. And no one could make that decision better than Andy Reid. He did what he knew he had to do to get his team into this game healthy and ready to play. Javon Curse came up limping after that last play. A first down for Minnesota as they hand it to Ontario Smith. He got nine. And Troy, you have to think that they're probably even going to be a little sharper off of this performance with the layoff. I mean, they were certainly good today, but you get the feeling as the game goes along that they're even getting a little sharper. Five minutes to play. Minnesota with a ball down by 20. Pepper flushed out, throws on the run. Penalty flag on the play as the pass is complete to Robinson. Edo Shepard made the stop, and this appears to be against Minnesota. Holding. 
71 offense. 10-yard penalty. First down. They get David Dixon. Well, David Dixon was against the freak on that one. They have Javon Curse that they put right in the middle right here, and they bring him and stand him up in some pass rush situations, and Javon Curse just too quick for David Dixon. He had to reach out and grab him, and Dante Culpepper had no choice but to get out and run out. So that moves the ball back to the 28. First and 20. Blitz coming. Ontario Smith on a screen. And Ontario Smith picks up 10. Sam Rayburn made the play for the Eagles. And I think that's the interesting thing about this Eagles defense, and more importantly about Jim Johnson, that even though here they are with a 20-point lead late in the fourth quarter, they're still bringing pressure. They're still going to play their style and they're not going to let score or situations dictate otherwise. It's also something that brings up a larger, bigger issue with this Philadelphia Eagles franchise. As Wiggins makes the catch, he's out to the 45-yard line. You're talking about Sam Rayburn, who's a free agent. You've got guys along the offensive line that are free agent acquisitions. A lot of them college free agents, guys that nobody gave a chance to. The job that this Eagles franchise has done of finding talent, letting the talent flourish, coaching the talent, and then locking up the talent in long-term contracts. They are the envy of the NFL. Third down and three. And the pass behind Moss, who couldn't make the catch. And Moss was not a factor in today's game. And neither have many other receivers been. You go down the list, and Randy Moss is getting it pretty good right now of the great receivers that this Eagles team has faced this season. Randy Moss, Moose and Muhammad, Hines Ward, Javon Walker, Donald Driver, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, Chad Johnson, none of them, none of them have had 100 yards against this defense. It's fourth down and three. Paul Pepper sprints right. Throws back across the field and completes it for a first down to Burleson. Gain of eight, and at least the drive will continue for the Vikings. Yeah, I'll go back to what you were talking about, Joe. And the one thing about it is, is there's clear lines as far as what everyone's responsibilities are within this organization. But ultimately, as with every team, you've got to be able to recognize and then draft quality players and that's what this team and organization does better than anybody and Tom Heckert is a guy who deserves a lot of credit for that on first down out of the shotgun Culpepper Ontario Smith what a hit and it's an incomplete pass that was Brown Sheldon Brown who was a second round pick out of South Carolina came up and smacked Ontario Smith. Yeah, and Sheldon Brown along with Lito Shepard are two guys that got their contracts extended this year so that they would have them wrapped up long term knowing the importance of having good corners within Jim Johnson's system. And they've made those kinds of decisions with a number of players before their contracts have come up. They've just done a good job of building a quality organization and doing all that within the framework of the salary cap. It's second down and ten. Paul Pepper, Robinson, incomplete. That was Rod Hood. Yeah, and I think if you go after anybody in this secondary, it's Roderick Hood. I go back to the Cowboys game I watched on tape. And it seemed like every time he was on the field, Bill Parcells wanted to take a shot at him. But I don't know where else you go. I mean, Sheldon Brown's the only one that didn't make the Pro Bowl out of this secondary. And there are times you watch him, and I'm not so sure he's not the best one out there. Rod Hood is another one that's on the list of free agents that have been major players for the success of this Philadelphia Eagles team over the past number of years. And Rod Hood has matured along with Sheldon Brown and Lito Shepard, even Dexter Wynn, Michael Lewis, their Pro Bowl safety. Culpepper on third down has a day and a half and fires Moss incomplete. Sheldon Brown. You know, Randy Moss is just kind of cruising across the field 
Went right down the middle and just trying to find an opening. You can see him clearly limping, really struggling on the ankle. And I don't know if it's throwing off his timing or not, but I have never seen him drop as many passes as he has today. Now, clearly he takes a shot, but that's a ball that typically Randy Moss makes. Brings up fourth down and ten. the shotgun blitz coming from the Eagles in the pass to Moss good for a first down Moss is down to the 32 yard line Lito Shepard made the stop for Philadelphia gain of 15 the Philadelphia Eagles are trying to play a little bit of a prevent defense show some blitz and then run back out underneath it but when doing that oftentimes they're not able to get underneath the wide receivers before they get into the open lane Coming up with a two-minute warning. Here's another free play. Should take a shot in the end zone. Cole Pepper does. Robinson on a jump ball. It's Robinson for the touchdown. It looked like Curse came across too early. And a 32-yard touchdown throw as it stands right now. Offside. Defense, 93. Penalties to decline. Touchdown. So Robinson gets the second touchdown of the day for the Minnesota Vikings. Culpepper has the other. Well, and a good job by Dante Culpepper recognizing that he did have a free play. Oh, oh. Take advantage of it and throw it down the field. And that's why the official was right there waiting before he signaled for the touchdown. But he stepped out. Yeah, he stepped out. And if he waited until after to give him the completion, then that should have been an incomplete pass. This would have to be a coach's challenge. I know there's a minute 59 remaining right now, but the play started outside the two-minute warning. It would be a coach's challenge if the Eagles want to do it, and Andy Reid is going to do it. I wasn't so sure he didn't have that thing pinned against his shoulder, and maybe that was enough for it to be a completed pass and a touchdown. Well, the official that was down there was waiting to see if he maintained control. I of the agree. Ball. I didn't he see his foot. Ruling on the field that the receiver did not catch the pass, and the foot was out of bounds. Yeah, and see his his view from where he's standing could not see his foot to see that it was in fact on the line from where he was watching it. He was watching the bobble and not the foot there to see if it was on the line. Now, I think that he has control of that ball. There is a rule that if you catch a pass, you have to maintain possession all the way to the ground, but I think that only applies if you're going to the ground on your own momentum. Clearly there, he was slung to the ground by Roderick Hood, and I believe that he had possession before he went out, but I agree with you, Troy, that was not the call that the official was making. He was waiting until he maintain control on the ground you're right the call is you have to maintain control even if you go to the ground but that is if you go to the ground on your own if you are tackled to the ground or pulled to the ground by a defender then it's a different issue the question is did he have control of it long enough then there was the bobble his foot was out of bounds and say this I wouldn't be shocked if they overturned it yeah I wouldn't either but I think that he has control here and then the ball is ripped out as he's going to the ground now maybe they would rule that his own momentum was taking him to the ground and if that is the case then this will be ruled incomplete because his foot is clearly out of bounds you can see Rod Hood with his right hand in there fighting to the end of the play and that last bit of effort Getting the ball out of the grasp of Robinson may save a touchdown against this Philadelphia defense. As Pete Morelli will give it a look. So while he watches it, we'll tell you that this year you can expect the unexpected. As Fox Sports brings the Super Bowl party to your house. Our guys will be in Jacksonville giving you everything you'll need to make your Super Bowl Sunday perfect. With in-depth interviews and analysis, performances by Kelly Clarkson, the Black Eyed Peas, and more. The next best thing to being at the game, Fox NFL Sunday Super Bowl 39 pregame show begins February 6th at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, in high definition only on Fox. You know, it just surprises me that they haven't tried this a little bit more often this game. They came in thinking they were going to take some shots at just throwing jump balls down the field to Marcus Robinson and really just haven't they hit one earlier hit another one here and they just didn't do it often enough today 
I think that's a catch, don't you? You see Robinson's Come on, effort. I'm, I'm going to disagree. I yeah, I don't think that it is. No, really? I, I don't. I don't think that, you know, because the ball comes out at the end, I don't think that they can come come back now and say, well, there was possession prior to the ball coming loose. I didn't see that. I would agree with Troy. So we'll just wait and see. Pete Morelli will give us the call as the Philadelphia Eagles have challenged it. After reviewing the play, the receiver had maintained control of the pass with two feet inbounds. It is a touchdown. CC. One for 40 this year. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And all it does at this moment with the extra point coming is the ability to close it down to a 13 point game with a minute 59 remaining. So you know Minnesota is left at the moment with two timeouts and that challenge that didn't work will cost Philadelphia their second timeout this second half. A minute 59 left in this one. Robinson gets the touchdown. It's a 13 point game. The NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox are brought to you by Sprint PCS Picture Mail. It's easy for football fans to shoot, send, and share their own football moments. Hey, aren't you guys tired of getting punished by your teachers for talking too much in class? Yeah. Tired of getting punished by your parents for talking too much on your wireless phone? Yeah. Well, now your parents can relax, because only Sprint got rid of ugly overages. Check it out. Protect your family from ugly overages. Now, 100 extra minutes only cost $5. Other plans charge at least 35 and unlimited Sprint PCS to PCS calling is included. Parents can save money, so you don't have to wear your big brother's pants. <laughs> Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Not in our house, buddy. Not today. Oh, no! This ain't going down! Not today, 99! Not today! Not today! Not tomorrow! Nobody coming in here! Not in our house! Not in our house! Not in our house. Visa, official card of the NFL and the house of the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots, where they accept no other card to get you in. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Invention is greater than convention. Moving forward is greater than sitting still. Simple is greater than complex. Greater power, greater technology, greater beauty. The all-new Audi A6. It's greater to lead than follow. Onside kick coming from the Minnesota Vikings. I have done this a lot of times, and this line of white guys are going to try and maul the line of green guys down at the other end. And it is not fun to be on the receiving end of this one. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I don't know anybody who likes being on the receiving end on the hands team, they call it, when the opponent is kicking an onside kick. Orton Anderson looking for that good bounce, and it's Freddie Mitchell who has had a fantastic day. Freddie Mitchell on the recovery, and the Philadelphia Eagles will take over just outside the Minnesota 40. We talked a little bit about Freddie and the job that he did in the last game of the regular season, getting to play some and getting a lot of opportunities. And, you know, comes out here today and has a good game. And it's really a good thing to see, too, because certainly with the production that Terrell Owens had during the course of the regular season, somewhere that's got to be picked up. Freddie helped pick that up here today, as did Brian Westbrook, which is what we expected. Yeah, you just have to think back. How good was this team when they had Terrell Owens? You know, it's a little frightening they can put on this kind of performance, but now the matchup with the Atlanta Falcons this week, I think is just going to be tremendous. Yeah, I mean, I think pretty good as far as how good were they with, with Terrell Owens. I mean, their wins in the, in the wins that they had averaged 14 points margin. You know, in the games that they've won. So that tells you how they were able to dominate the opponents that they played. If you want to talk about the Atlanta Falcons, now it's going to be the chess match of Jim Johnson with this fantastic defense of the Philadelphia Eagles trying to figure out a way to contain the running game. And that includes, obviously, Michael Vick for the Atlanta Falcons. And at one time, it was considered to be the weakness for the Philadelphia Eagles defense 
trying to stop the run. But I don't think you can say that anymore. Since Jeremiah Trotter has gone in the game, he has just become a force. Yeah, and I think what we've seen here today, as we saw yesterday, whether it's the Minnesota Vikings or the St. Louis Rams, these teams that that have to go through the wild card game in order to ultimately go all the way to the Super Bowl. By the time they even get into the divisional game this weekend, it's hard to get to that emotional level that you have to get to in the playoffs, especially when you're doing it against a team that's been able to rest and it's their first game of the playoffs. On second down and 10, they hand and it's Westbrook. Breaking free for a first down inside the 30. Down to the 26. We go back to January 11, 2003. Two teams meeting in the playoffs, Atlanta and Philadelphia. Bobby Taylor picking off a Michael Vick interception and returns it 39 yards for the score. Brian Dawkins just laying out Michael Vick on that hit. McNabb hitting James Thrash for a 35-yard touchdown, sealing a 20-6 victory. And then Philadelphia lost the NFC Championship the following week. Here in Philadelphia, different stadium to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who went on to win the Super Bowl over Oakland. On first down, it's Westbrook. And if Westbrook is so valuable, you could make the case that Westbrook shouldn't be getting the ball right now. But I guess they've had enough rest, Troy. So yeah, hey, why, so not? why not? Why not? You know, to go back to what you're talking about with Atlanta, I think that I think Michael Vick's a different quarterback also from where he was a couple of years ago. And his development has really been remarkable. I mean, I know that he's not the passer that a lot of people would like for him to be, but he can beat you in so many other ways. And then when you talk about that defensive team of, of the Atlanta Falcons and the way they're able to put pressure on a quarterback, it, it should be a good matchup, Chris. You know what's really fun for me to watch about it is there's a certain simplicity to Atlanta's offense. I mean, basically, they run the cutback play, they run the stretch play, and they run the bootleg off of it. And it's almost like, what do you want to try and defend? <laughs> if you run your linebackers over the top, they cut back. If you try and crash your end down to take that away, here comes Mike Vick on a bootleg. It's pick your poison, and all of them can really run. And there's a guy that's going to have to pick the poison. That's Jim Johnson, who just left the frame. Brian Dawkins is his defensive leader out on the field. No, pretty remarkable that this year, that when everybody's talked about the great defensive teams in the league, it's been the Washington Redskins and the Baltimore Ravens and so few people have thrown the Philadelphia Eagles in with that group and they certainly should be one of them. Well, it's simply a question of yardage. I mean, they give up yardage. They were a number 10 defense in the NFL, but the most important statistic would be points. And this is a team that was tied for second in the NFL in points allowed, but and they're only, not known as that. And team. only second because they basically gave away the last couple of games of the season and gave up 38, I think, to the Cincinnati Bengals. But this is clearly, Troy, you make a great point, one of the dominant defenses in all the NFL. You've got Andy Reid, who is in his sixth year. They get their fourth division title this year, and here they go back to their fourth consecutive NFC championship game. It's a pretty remarkable accomplishment. And, and Joe, didn't you get the feeling when we were visiting with the coaches and players there on Friday and being around the team and in the locker room that this was a very confident group? And although everybody was questioning them, what are they going to do without Terrell Owens? I think they knew exactly what they were going to do without Terrell Owens. You know, one thing we need to show before we go off the air here, John Runyon on one of these meaningless plays may have gotten injured a bit. Watch John Runyon here get up off the ground and try and make a block, and Westbrook comes down on the back of his knee, and then E.J. Henderson plows him backwards over the top. We just have to keep our eye on that one to see if he got injured or not. I'm sure that's something that will be revisited after the game. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Okay, here with Donovan McNabb live. Donovan, congratulations on that victory. Tell me some of the things you hope to accomplish on offense out there today. Well, I mean, to, today, you know, we just wanted to come out and be efficient and make sure we keep the chains moving thing and uh, just continue to work. You know, this thing is uh, still continuing on, although what happened is unfortunate with T.O.'s injury. Uh, and I think what we just wanted to show is that, uh, you know, we have a team full of characters and guys that work extremely hard to try to be the best. And I think we showed a sign today and uh, there are good things to come. Can't let you celebrate this victory too much because, of course, we want to look ahead to next week back in the championship game. Why will the fourth time be a charm? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of good things have happened to other teams. And uh, I think kind of the inspiration for us in Boston 
Boston Red Sox went on and uh, won the whole deal. And, you know, there were other couple teams. But I think the good thing about this year is they're a better team. Uh, we're healthier. Uh, you know, and, and I think guys just kind of have it in their mind of, of what we need to do in order to get there. And, you know, if, if we make it and, you know, we play well next week, uh, you know, we're not just happy just making it. So uh, that lets you know where, where our goals are. And our goals are to win this whole thing. And, and uh, we're taking one game at a time. McNabb and Vic, not bad. Thanks, Donovan. Let's go back up to Joe. All right, Donovan McNabb was there for game two of the World Series in Boston. And what an amazing accomplishment. Fourth consecutive NFC Championship game for the Philadelphia Eagles franchise. They beat Minnesota by 13 points. We'll come back and wrap up our day after this.